Oh my god, y'all saw that, right? Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> Ooh, additional valor points. Mine. Additional valor? Is that what you said? Yeah, the double XP stuff. Mm, mm-hmm. Which... I am not a fan of having to go to the tower to pick up all the bounties again. My God bless it. It's the most inefficient use of time. Yeah, but to be fair, the majority of the bounties, except for the weekly stuff, uh, I don't know. They're just for, like, tokens and stuff. Uh, like and clan day. XP. Well, yeah, but once you pick... Like, if you do the weeklies on clan XP, you're going to fill out your xp pretty quickly like oh, I, see, I don't i haven't done the weeklies i've only done the daily ones because i run solo uh let's see i did one no i did two weeklies and i ran crucible gambit and whatever the le one of the yeah the see i agree is. i agree with hurt on that one like I wish they brought back Xander and the bounty board. Oh yeah, like, if like they're gonna that, if they're gonna bring that. if they're gonna make us go back to the tower, I really wish they would have a central instead of like having to run to every single corner. Right. I'm like, oh my god. And I agree with that. I saw a Reddit post of somebody calling that out and wanting it, but it's just, I don't know. I get it because they want people I, going see, to all the different right, vendors right. or having yeah, a reason to go because there would be no reason see to both get sides. it. I definitely see both sides, but it's just just me being picky. Um, all right, so the scout rifle that I got with the uh, Talons of the Eagle mm -hmm. has Zen Moment and Explosive Payload. And then I have a Tactical Mag on it with Hammer Forged Rifling. So my range is nearly max. Nice. Because <laughs> I masterworked it. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, oh my god, this is so much fun. Um, and then what was the sidearm that I was telling you about? Uh, it's the... Uh, I know the Vesting Dynasty that I got was pretty decent. But there was another one that I got. God damn it, where'd that go? Uh, translation Theory. Yeah, full auto trigger system. <laughs> full auto trigger system and tap the trigger nice. <laughs> and it's got I arm have... and it's got armor piercing rounds <laughs> my trust has drop mag snapshot sites and rampage and it... i like i'm liking rampage rampage is pretty fun mm -hmm. like the translation theory that i have its stability is nearly max like it's so much fun and then i got a <clears throat> claws of the wolf which is the mm -hmm. iron, iron banner uh pulse and mm -hmm. it's got snapshot sights which i'm like whatever it's not really a deal breaker or maker for me but then it's got the full auto trigger system <laughs> it's just like oh here's all the bullets have them have fun <laughs> nice i have triple tap and kill clip on my tiger spite and it is beautiful I'm, you know what? I'll be honest. The Hunter Crucible armor is gorgeous. Is it? I oh, haven't even. Oh my god! With it. It's like it's got like the, um, it's not the it's not the uh, scale mail, uh, from the War Beast, but it's like almost like a, a almost nod to the Rasputin uh, 
polygons or the little pyramid shapes. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I really, really like it. I haven't gotten the cloak just yet, but. How do I run the timer on that side? Uh, or do I even have to run the timer? Or are you doing that? I was just going to say if you could. Yeah. What? How do I. Okay. Timer first. Shoot. What that way, if you can, things? if you can just keep an eye on it, then I, oh, I, I can see. I, okay. Yeah, we can do either way. Um, but that way, uh, if we can do that, or if you're okay doing that, then I can, I can still see the chat, but I can have multiple windows open without having to be bouncing between windows. Yeah. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it. I'm actually gonna tie it into show notes real quick. At least the commands for the. Oh yeah, chrono. definitely, definitely, yeah. And that way I can see it on my name. And if you do the tag help, I put together that help tag. So if you just do dot tag help, it'll kick those commands out again. Uh, okay. Space, space, space between. Space between, I see it. Okay. Okay. Four frames in the tower, two at the temple. Three foot up. I honestly am not a fan of the Iron Banner armor. I'll be completely honest there. I, I think don't it like looks, the helmet. I think it looks like hot garbage. But that's just me. I also am not a fan of not being able to use my Iron Banner from previous after I grinded like through hell and back to get that damn helmet. I want to keep it. I like that helmet. I like the I like the old uh, season three Iron Banner armor. I completely understand why we have a new, uh, <clears throat> why we have new armor. But I really wish that we could, uh, like, get aesthetics ornaments to kind of again kind of transmog it back to those the older style. Just mm-hmm. just me, just me. I mean, I, I completely again like completely understand why we can't or why we have new armor because it's a new season. So I mean, like, whatever. But that's just my opinion. Yeah. How's Beard tonight? Mmm. Mm? Just grown? Mm. Crucible. I have I'm doing my daily gambit match. I focus. Don't, don't touch gambit with a ten foot pole. Oh my god, it's so much fun. It is my favorite False. Pe- like Oh, it's so much fun. You know, you being contrarian in this case is completely wrong. Who me? I Yes, you. Yeah. I'm not a fan of I I'm not fun. I'm not a fan of Warzone and I'm definitely not a fan of Gambit. I just I mean, I don't Have I, you gone in with a team? Fuck no. Okay. That's your problem. No, my problem is, hundred... is that I, I don't I I have no I don't know. I don't know. Yes, I understand that might be my problem, but see, even Biveltron's over here like Gambit rules. And Gambit Biveltron's is freaking fun. Terrible. That's kind of good. That's that's like that's that's really aggressive, Beard. I don't know yeah. how I feel about this. But I know Biveltron, and he knows I'm joking. At least I hope he knows I'm joking. Yeah, I have a full set of the Iron Banner Hunter armor, and it's just I don't. I don't know what theme they're going with. Are they going for samurai or are they going with like mentally challenged European knight? Because either yeah. one works and I'm not really sure how I feel about it. Yeah. I'm not even going to say what the helmet looks like on a hunter because it's just gross. How much? How dare you, you mustached black bear? <laughs> My titan looks like a crab. <laughs> I've been called worse. I want to know like what the crab? does the because uh, the Iron Banner armor. What does the Wing Contender cloak look like? Because I have that's like the one piece of crucible armor that I haven't gotten. Uh, there's a picture on Ishtar. Oh, that's true. There's these things called the internet. Yeah. 
Maybe you should use them once in a while. No! Okay. Terrible help. Terrible. Wing contender hunter cloak. Oh my gosh, this is just going to be a simple cloak that will make me so happy. Oh, it's pretty. All right, so I need to get it. What the hell is that thing? Wing contender. The hell type of... Oh, that's a weird cowl. <laughs> oh, man. Doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. I'm not, I can't get used to the new chrome bubble thing. Oh, it looks so weird. I really it's, don't like it. I'm like, I'm dumb. so confused by it. It throws me off every time. It's so dumb. Beard doesn't like it. Beard really I, doesn't like it. I get how it's like really clean looking. But it's not pretty. But it's not clean looking. You know what it reminds me of? Apple. <laughs> you know what you don't remind me of? Apple. Yeah, I don't like Apple. Apple can suck my left nut. <laughs> <laughs> I want that sound clip. Just the delivery. Apple is the worst oh, shit on record there. Anybody have what? Uh, God damn it, I keep forgetting that they can't hear me. Why do you need an adult, Rhett? Is it Ziona? I'm... See, I'm already fumbling on words. Why the hell am I here? We love you? That's why you're here? I guess. I'm just going to be a grump tonight, though, because I'm exhausted. Yeah. I know that feeling. Once again, Apple can suck my laugh nut. <laughs> Let's find Steph. I hope you drop said iPhone and it breaks on you. And you have to go get it repaired or replaced. No, I don't. That's, that's, that's mean of me. I don't actually mean that. I don't, I don't wish for anybody to go into an Apple store that doesn't have to, because that is a nightmare. <laughs> I was about to say, that's like, that's aggression dogs. right there. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, hey, this map's pretty. I've never been on this map. No, I did not try for World's First. What do you think I am, a no-life streamer? I tried for World's First, and that lasted about an hour before we went. This is Oh, stupid. I don't have, I don't have, uh, that's... Good to know. Forget that I didn't have. <sighs> I'm not running Night Stalker. I don't know why I'm even running Iron Banner right now. Zone hey. Advantage. Zone Advantage is yours. Do you like it when Lord Shucks? No. Ah! Actually, I really don't. I tried to buy a new charger for my phone at an Apple store. It took me, took 15, me 15 minutes, minutes to figure out how to pay for it. Hack <laughs> your it. Oh my god, that's funny. Hello, sirs. Thanks for capturing Zone A. All right, I texted Justin to see if he's going to be able to make it. Okay.
Gotcha. Should not have been able to cut him, but I did. Man, this sucks. What sucks? Nothing. He's good. Frick, where'd the guy go? Come on, guy. Help. Hey, Rose, how are you doing tonight? Fuck, fuck, fuck. Get out of the downrange, Jesus there we go. Christmas. What are you playing, Green? Gambit. Of course you are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hence the comment about Gambit. <laughs> oh, I love Gambit. I just wish I, I didn't. I do, too. I just wish I didn't feel like I wanted to just play Iron Banner right now. God, this... All right. So, if anybody does get a chance, I know it's getting posted all over the internet, but the, the pulse rifle from Iron Banner is retarded good. Is it? Okay, because I got one. So I got good. one that's got full auto. Yeah, it is so good. I ha I'm really enjoying the uh, scout rifle. Yep. Yeah, it's another good one. It's a little slow for my liking, but it does fire pretty... Uh, it's pretty steady, but it's a little slow for my for my liking. <laughs> yeah, for the little bit I've had to actually sit and play with the thing, we'll get one. It does about 24 to the head right now. Nice. Oh, we're always happy you are here, Rose. Yay, yeah. Rose is here. Ow. I saw Ooh, that, that a... uh, MREs finally, they finally got pizza MREs. Ooh, I saw pizza was... MREs? Really? Yeah. Pizza yeah. MREs. I'm like, it's about I... damn time. Uh, like Ro the the Rose had, uh, I think Rose had retweeted that one. What the? Oh, that's a grenade. All right, I say we give Justin about two more minutes, and then we can jump into the top three. Yeah, give me... Hopefully we lose this round. Um, I mean, I could do top three while playing Gambit. It's just I might make some weird noises. What's the thing this week again? Desserts. Desserts. Desserts, thank you. I thought that's what it was, but I could not remember. I got the my bow friends back. Try uh yeah. metal. <laughs> I, I was laughing so hard when I got that. I was like, "Oh my god, yes." Uh Oh no, Saladin only has weekly bounties, right? He doesn't have daily bounties. Mm -hmm. Yes. My god, the bow is so helpful when you're, like, running uh, support. I, mm -hmm. I get so many freaking assists just from hanging back and waiting for our, my team to start picking at people. Just like, oh, thunk. There's that, and that, and that. 
Yep. Oh no! Audio is breaking up. Okay. Oh shit, we're winning. That's scary. All right. I'm 107 out of 84 right now, so give me a second. Because <clears throat> I know I won't be able to focus on both right now. No way. Um, I really bum, just bum, wanted bum. to get in a match before it got any later. It's fine. Okay. I really think I need to get better at void. Oh, the little teleporting thing? Are you using that? Yeah. I need to play around with it a little bit more, I think. The what? The teleport for void... Oh, yeah, that looks like it actually is going to be kind of weirdly difficult to use. It's uh, it's all about dodging before it's anything else. That's obvious. Right, because I know I've I've managed to kill a lot of the void locks who are using it. And yeah. it's simply because they seem to not really know where they're dodging. Right. Like, if that makes any sense. Like, I've been able to, like, dodge them more than I can... The distance is weirdly predictable, but so many people don't predict it proper. Yeah. I know what you mean. I'm not explaining myself very well. No, yeah, it's... But, like, especially in the middle of, like, chaos, it's just, like, it's one of those things where yep. it's like, oh, you're gonna be right there. Yep. Oh, God, that's a shotgun. Oh, that's hey, our shotgun. Go. Gotta win. <laughs> I forgot. How did I get on top? I'm 3.0 efficiency. How? Why? I. I'm confused. That's weird. <laughs> I, I <Grant>. just. <laughs> I don't Grant know how I'm largely, still alive. <laughs> Grant is largely confused. About I'm, I'm gonna confuse myself. I just beat down like five people. <laughs> Grant has a new warlock named after him. I, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't know how the hell we came back and won this game, but oh. all right. Uh, did I ever get done my powerful gear on? No, no, I didn't. I didn't Has anyone start. else noticed a weird thing about the streaks not uh, resetting if you lose? Yes. Yeah. Is that a glitch or is that a new thing? I have no idea. Because I'm like, I'm not complaining, but <laughs> but I definitely have not been on the streak as long as this says I have been. Right. Yeah, I have no idea why it's doing that. Because it did that for me in Gambit and Iron Banner. Yeah, it's doing that for me in Iron Banner right now, so it's just I was just curious if if that was just me or if that was something that... Yay. You guys ready? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Oh, I got another Claw of the Wolf. Nice. Outlong yeah, Grave that's Robber. The, that's the one. It's got shit stability, though. Um, hey, Grundy. Don't believe that rating. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Is it, is don't it not? Don't believe that okay. rating. Okay, I'll... I'll give it a try. Because I said the absolute same thing. <laughs> Stability is like in the toilet on this thing. 
What is outlaw? Which one is that one? That's the oh precision um, reload reload. Okay, precision mm -hmm. reload perk. Yeah, you got it. It's super nice. Uh, those perks aren't like super amazing. I like, I like those one. perks. They're great on a hand cannon. Well, grave robber just. It's like, eh, I, are, I already am a compulsive reloader, so I don't really need help with that. Though Outlaw is nice, because it cuts down the reload nice. time. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, it's, if you're ready, Green, I can play the audio. Let's do it. Welcome to FFC Top 3, a show where we, your FFC hosts, count things down from number 3 all the way down to number 1. Thank you for joining us this week. If you have a suggestion, you know where to send it. Send it to us at Twitter, Discord, email, all the places. You, you guys get the same information each week, but send us if you have any suggestions. And this week, we're discussing our top 3 favorite desserts, which I am kind of oddly excited to talk about i mean i was excited to talk about books last week and i know a lot of people really enjoyed that but i'm i'm not a huge dessert person but this one was kind of fun for me to put together so i don't know how you guys feel about this guy um, I'm, I'm along the same lines i'm not i don't have yeah. a huge i don't have a huge sweet tooth but like <clears throat> there there are i can easily put together a top three there are at least three things that i can consider desserts yeah well, let's see here. Last week, I think we made blue go first. Let's make nope, beard go beard, first. This beard week. went first last week. To okay, be fair, so then to we'll be fair to beard. Well, blue go first. Um, my number three is actually going to be uh, a gelato or shaved ice, which those are I know, very I, different. I, well, uh, yeah, they are. Like as far as like like texture and stuff, yes, they are. But like to me, they're kind of the equivalent of like. Icy Except, treats. Yeah, acceptable Cold coldness. Treats. Yeah, coldness, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, I definitely prefer gelato, uh, but if that's not an option, then shaved ice um, is acceptable in my mind. I haven't had a shaved ice since I was in Little League back in, like, what, when I was 12? So it's been a while. Oh, I am so sorry for your loss. Hmm. It's not bad. It's not that <laughs> much big of a loss. <laughs> What's uh, your number three? My number three would have to be a Slurpee or Icy of some like mm. Really? Both yeah. of you. <laughs> Slurpees oh. are I'm actually I'm actually enjoying a uh cream slush right now. Because mm, those are amazing. Awesome. I'm boring and I like Coke ones a lot, so I get those a lot more than I probably should. They have my throat because it just it just feels good. Um, mm -hmm. No, I don't. I just have real really sensitive teeth. That's yeah, why I like the cream I, slush because yeah. the the uh, ice cream cuts the Hashtag. slush. That's very true. Pew, pew. Have you pew, ever pew. had a vanilla cream Dr Pepper from Sonic? Yes, well, that's good stuff though. That, I don't usually I don't usually support diluting Dr Pepper, but um, mm -hmm. that, that is, is an, an acceptable, acceptable way one. to do that. That's an acceptable mm -hmm. way of doing that. God, it's so well, the good. other thing. The other thing I don't really mind about Slurpees is that it's still a lot more ice than it is soda. So mm -hmm. I feel a lot mm. less like awkward about drinking as many of them as I do. Because I already know that they're a little better for me thanks to the fact that it's so much more water than it is soda. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> let's go with that. Yeah, let's, let's, let's go we'll, with uh, that. There's still a ton of sugar we'll go, in them, but we'll, we'll go just for say a little that. bit at least. Look, it helps, okay? <laughs> just, 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 just I mean, one, right? It's desserts. It's all going to be sugar anyway, right? Exactly. Like, there's there's nothing else you could do about it. Granted, I don't really use this one as dessert. I use it as like um, kind of almost an everything. Mm -hmm. But it's a good it's a good like, I don't know. I guess you could say a snack. So it still counts. Still counts. Darn it. It's all right. Speaking of snacks, mine is kind of more of a snack sized dessert because I'm not a like Blue was saying. I'm not a huge sweet fan. And so I like my desserts to be like small and except for one thing, my number one, I will eat a full helping of whatever no my number one is. But number three, cupcake. Cupcake is like the perfect delivery size. And How you do you have, like, do you do you sandwich them 
or do you eat them it like depends. a heathen? It depends on the cupcake. If the cupcake is filled with a ganache, you can't sandwich it. Because my favorite If you try really hard, was, you can. No, you can't without making a huge mess. Uh, my favorite cupcake I've ever had was a Bailey's ganache filled cupcake with Guinness battered, like the cupcake itself had Guinness batter. And then there was a, another like coffee liqueur mixed into the icing. It was an, it was an Irish car bomb cupcake is what they called it, but it wasn't the same ingredients as an Irish cup car bomb, but it was delicious. Yeah, that sounds and really was, interesting, actually. It was so good. Um, my friend, actually, the people who got me into playing Destiny, um, co-teachers of mine when I was teaching, she made them. And I may have had like seven or eight of them in one sitting, Whoa. which is terrible for you. But it's so good. Anyway, here, I got a question for you before we move on. How do you okay. eat your cupcake like you were asking me? Normally, I sandwich them. And I eat them one bite at a time like any other other person. But how do you guys eat cupcakes? Uh, like a civilized person, I sandwich them. I also have a beard, so I sandwich them. <laughs> because yeah. it's cupcake. They're just too, they're too messy if you don't do it. Beard, what uh, about you? How do you uh, eat I mean, yours? Is the cupcake tiny? And we'll say normal sized cupcake, not the mini ones. Okie dokie, I shove it all in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Would you have said it anything different for the many ones? Um, you shove two or three in the same time? Is that where? Yes. <laughs> it also depends on the, uh, on, the, on the cupcake, but I feel like if I said anything about the type of cupcake that I, I do that to... I would give away my number one, so I'm not going to say anything. Okay. Blue, what's your number two? Cheesecake. Or funnel okay. cake. Cheesecake or funnel cake. But they're two different things entirely. Yes, yes, but they are both my number two, so you know what? You can just deal with it. But they're two different things entirely. Yeah. They are. They are. I'm with you and- on this. Funnel I'm, cake, I'm funnel cake is run. like one of the things that like if I go to a uh, like a state fair or a entertainment park of any kind, I will I will be the the kind of a hole that judges the entire place off their funnel cakes <laughs> or lack thereof of funnel cakes because apparently in the Midwest funnel cakes are not held sacred like they should be. Uh, really? Which it, yeah, it's a really weird thing. Like state it, fair in Kansas, like. The state fair, maybe, but like the entertainment parks, there's not. Um, oh yeah, that's not a thing. Like worlds of fun, they don't have. They don't. Or it took me forever to find a funnel cake. They find. I finally found one at like the back corner of this massive entertainment park. It was the weirdest thing. I was like, because I like, growing up in Texas, you uh, you have funnel cakes, and they're like massive neon signs. Are like, here's our funnel cakes. Come get them, mm-hmm. please. And so when I came up here and we went to like one of the first times I went to the world of fun is basically the equivalent of six flags for those who might be like me and not know what that is. Um, it was very weird to not have that um, advertisement, I guess. Like it was just, it was really weird. Um, but yeah, no that. And then just plain cheesecakes, plain cheesecakes is a solid number two in my book. Okay. I'm I'm I am an odd person. I will not I will not lie about this. We knew that. That's mm-hmm. fine. Um, I'm gonna say we don't need a podcast to tell us that. <laughs> yeah, I know. I I mean, if you if you have spoken to me and you don't know this, I'm I'm sorry of your inability to judge a person's character, but that's fine. Beard, what's your singular number two? Mm, yeah, nice. that's probably See? a good way to start doing this. These Rude. things, especially with blue <laughs> hanging around here. Oh, okay, don't even <laughs> start, Mister Mister Runners Up. Look, you. I can still have runners up and denote them as runners up. Okay, all right. Good talk. Glad we had it. Uh, so my number two would be a root beer float. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like I don't, I don't have much else to really say. It's a root beer freaking float. Like, come but on. Uh, important question though, important distinction. Distinction. 
what kind of roof do you use? Yeah, I thought that was going to be the question. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a really tough question because it depends on the day. Uh, I am, I, I, I have even had sarsaparilla floats, and they mm. are also pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, sarsaparilla, though, and root beer are completely different in terms of how they are, but yet they're completely the same. Uh, it's really hard to, to say if you've never had both of them. Um, now, being, of course, in the Northeast, I have the benefit that state fairs are no problem for me whatsoever, and funnel cake is entirely fine, which also means that I have the benefit that I can do either Barks and W or Mug without even needing to flinch about it. <laughs> uh, and that being said, I would probably... I, I'm a Barks fan, but in cases of root beer floats, I would probably have to go A and W. I just it's think A and W has a yeah, it just has a a better overall handle on what it wants to be. I guess I don't know. It just it fits the benefit of uh, of root beer a little better. Yeah, I can I can definitely see that. Barks is like a really really hot day root beer yep. for me. Oh, like same. It, mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes tons of sense actually. Yeah, definitely. My number two is a kind of a, a fair treat. Um, my number two is saltwater taffy. That's a good one. I go like if we see saltwater taffy places, I am really super tempted to buy like a pound of it and take it mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. Um, Estes Park is not far from where I live, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they have really, really it's good amazing. saltwater taffy. So, but hot tip if you ever go to Estes Park. There is only one place in the entire town that makes their own taffy in town. Only one place in the entire town. And it's called the Taffy Shop. Mm -hmm. And it and has the old-fashioned pools. And it's and so oh good. Oh my god, I get to live it's at that so place. It's so good. And they rotate their flavors. Like, my favorite that they do, there's two two that they do that are really good that are like non-traditional flavors. Like, I, I'm really partial to like peppermint, but they do a Texas pecan which is very like buttery and has pieces of pecan in it. And then they also do a salt water or no, a salted caramel saltwater taffy. And it has pieces of salt in it. And I am a sucker for anything that has like a little bit of crunch with it. Oh my God. It's so good. I may be contemplating going up to Estes park this weekend for Aspen peeping and saltwater taffy because it is turning fall and I'm so excited. Yes. Just a moment for that. Uh, number ones. Blue. Bluebell vanilla ice cream. Homemade vanilla. No question. No debate. You're I'm a done. simple man with simple I'm, needs. I'm done. I'm done. Like, if you've ever had Bluebell ice cream, uh, I, don't, I don't think it needs much defense. I've never had any ice cream that tastes better, to be honest. Mm. Uh, and it, it's mostly, I mean, to be fair, I'm also like, you know, like I've said multiple times already growing up in Texas, it's kind of a staple down there. Like you can't go anywhere without Bluebell being present. Right. Um, right. So it, and I just, I mean, it's just for, in my opinion, it's just hands down an amazing ice cream. Uh, and I, I really just really like the homemade vanilla. Just very simple. Yeah. Yeah. That's good stuff. I'm going to say it goes on a lot of stuff, too. I'm seeing mm -hmm. stuff like pie. Mm -hmm. Like funnel like cakes. Mm -hmm. What? I've never put ice cream on funnel cakes. What? I would make the oh, funnel cake soggy. So good. What is oh, that? my gosh. Soggy. Why have you? No. How long do you eat? A... How long does it take you to eat a funnel cake? Like I'm not scarfing it down super fast. Well, you don't have to scarf it. But, I mean, yeah, you put a little ice cream on a funnel cake. Oh, my God. It's delicious. Are you a real person, Green? <laughs> Is there a possibility that you are not real? <laughs> uh, no. It, it, I guess the, the thing that's fair to say is when I go to a fair, I don't get sweet treats. I get savory treats because mm -hmm. I, I would that, much yeah. prefer salty things compared to sweet things. So mm -hmm. I don't have I don't have funnel cakes very often. And so I've never tried funnel cake with ice cream. I mean, yeah. So here's the thing is like, normally I'm right there with you, but funnel cakes are like, I, I, I funnel cakes are the one thing. And I almost would not even consider a funnel cake <laughs> a sweet. 
like it's kind of a borderline between sweet and sweet. It depends on how much, uh, what type of batter they use, to be honest. Right. Because I've had really savory funnel cakes, like really kind of just mundane tasting, (laughs) which Mm -hmm. is really hard. It's really weird to say that about a funnel cake. But like, and if they also, you know, there is a thing as much, there is such a thing as too much powdered sugar. Like I've had it before and it's like, I'm like, I'm going to need to dump this off. Like, <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, like it's just, oh my God, funnel cake. And you throw just like a dollop of bluebell ice cream on it. It's just, mm. cause that's, okay. that's how, uh, with the state fair, that's, that's sometimes how they'd make fried ice cream. Deep fried ice cream. Yeah, They'll uh-huh, put funnel cake uh-huh. batter around the ice cream and then deep fry that. And that that oh my god. I've had I've had fried ice cream before. That's pretty yeah. good. Well, no, no. I mean, like this is like they they make it with the funnel cake batter. Like yeah. they take the same concept as deep fried ice cream, but they use the funnel cake batter instead of just regular deep fry, like the just regular batter. And so it's okay. just like oh my god, it's just so much so good. Hmm. Beard. What's your number one? Strawberry cheesecake. Strawberry cheesecake. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Okay. Why? Why not? <laughs> <laughs> like I a New York style, strawberry. like a New York style, a New York style with strawberry like on it, or strawberry like actual strawberry cream cheese. Either powder. one. Either one. Okay. Uh, I am. I am. All right. Strawberries are one of my favorite. Food. So as soon as you decide to go ahead and put strawberries on just about anything it makes it pretty well better like strawberry ice cream strawberries on uh, funnel cake strawberries on funnel cake strawberries with uh yeah i already said ice cream uh strawberries with uh goodness anything i'm I'm missing the cut uh strawberry shakes are also pretty good Mm, Uh, mm um it's it, it it depends of course on on what it is but off the top of my head those are the few things i can think of uh but cheesecake now i love cheesecake to begin with uh, and I was just going to say, like, you know, my top three favorite cheesecakes and be done with it. Uh, but I thought that was going to be a really, really freaking boring list. Uh, so that being said, I I definitely have to put, like, strawberry cheesecake as, like, my number one. You know? uh, it is just so good. Uh, it actually goes with a lot and partnered with uh, some liquors even, too. I think it actually works very well. Uh, if you if you do, like, a, a Long Island or something, it, it partners pretty well with it. So is something that would also be a little bit on the sweet side to to complement it. You know, I have a I I've decided I figured out why I'm so like not on board with your guys's is because I I don't save room for dessert. So all of my desserts are like light or small. I don't generally save room for dessert either. Uh but I'm still like, you know what? I'm going to put that in my tummy. So I put See, I, I actually, I'm, I, I don't, I know I'm not going to save room for dessert, so I generally just try to have dessert before anything else. Uh huh. Yeah, it's also fair Gosh. because it's a lot easier to. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, it's a lot easier to get an actual entree <laughs> than it is to go back to <laughs> how everything is with the, uh, with the dessert. Because a lot of times dessert doesn't stay. That's the problem with desserts. Like they don't stay around for a very long time. No. Uh, a lot of time they, they unless it's like a. A box of cookies or something, it's not going to hold for a long period. Yeah, and depending on the type of cookie, those will go away pretty quick, too. Well, especially when I put them in my belly. Right. As opposed to putting them in other places. Um, The... I my number don't know what you know. <laughs> my number one. Beard and I are like, we're just, uh, just like, um, just no. Moving let's, on. Let's never. Um, <laughs> I mean, right. Anyway, no, no, um, we're good. We're good. One, just move on, we're Green. Good. Just let it go. Is an upside down pineapple cake. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Which also that, tastes good with ice cream, by the oh way. Oh my god, I have had that with ice cream and. When it first comes like, out of the oven and you do it with ice cream, it's amazing. I was about to say, do you do you make it in an oven or do you make it in a Dutch oven? I've never tried it in a Dutch oven. What? Julian, I don't know. Oh, then you're missing. Like, that's. Oh, When my it caramelizes, gosh. I get that. But yeah, yeah, that's like that's that's when they're at the best. Those things are like that's like art. I mean, granted, you can make a lot of really good stuff in a Dutch oven. But that right. is one of that's one of the few things that it's like. It's significantly better. Oh man, 
Yeah, that is definitely my favorite. That is the thing I will request um, for my birthday, unless we have like walnuts for some reason, and then I request baklava, which is on my also list. Baklava is my also rand or like runners up, as well as key lime pie. I jumped ahead of you guys for the runners up. You may go now. Yeah, see, it's not my fault this time, Blue. <laughs> Blue just put his runners up in the list. I just, so it's yeah, fine. I just include them. See, that's how I run everything. It's like I didn't know if I was going to have time for runners up, so I just included them with the meal. Beard. Um. Yeah, I had a couple good ones, and then I forgot about them. Uh, apple pie is always a, a good mm. one, though. That's that's Ooh. definitely a good runner up. Here's a, here's a weird weird thing. Have you ever had apple pie with cheddar cheese on top? No. Yes, that is I have. actually it is very really odd. good. Yeah, it's odd, but it's it's but very it's good. good. It's like it's I, it's like eating uh, chili with a cinnamon roll. Like it makes absolutely no sense, but it tastes really good. I, I know. I, I think I I think I might have just broken beard, but <laughs> it's a southern these, thing. It is. It's totally don't. These things it, don't make sense together. No, they don't. But <laughs> so the trick, the trick with cinnamon rolls and chili is because uh, if you're ever in a chili uh, tasting contest, that's the point is it actually will make the taste like for some reason, the way that the cinnamon interacts with it, it makes the taste of the chili uh, more pronounced, which if you're just eating chili, it's delicious. So in the words of Spock, it is not logical. N- no. You know what else isn't logical? Okay, so you're a big fan of cheesecake, right? Uh-huh. Have you ever had sour cream and brown sugar and strawberries? Julie does that. No. I'm already okay. not a fan of sour cream to begin with, so no. Well, and so that's the funny thing is, it tastes like a strawberry cheesecake. I'm I'm not I'm not joking. I am I am legitimately dead serious there. The uh so it was one of the things that my wife's family actually introduced me to and I I had the same reaction as you. I was like you're pulling my leg. Actually, I used different words. Uh but I was like I'm not eating that until I watch you eat it. And so mm-hmm. they're like they're like okay, like they and they ate like and her dad who is a really like picky eater uh ate it and i was like okay so this is slightly safe and so i tried it and i was like oh my god it's delicious it's oh it's so good it's a weird it's like the apple pie thing it's a weird mixture that you don't think that's gonna work but it really does and i'm not joking it tastes just like a strawberry cheesecake Uh, if you if you're a fan if you're a fan of strawberry cheesecake i'm not joking go get us go get good strawberry like good strawberry good ripe strawberry get sour cream and put put a good dosage of brown sugar on it. Oh. Did you have any other also ones, beard? Can I ruin anything else for you? That's kind of what I'm hearing as well. No. no I think I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, yep, I'm good. I uh He's like oh, I, all yep, the things I'm that good. all the things I hold sacred, you're not allowed to touch anymore. <laughs> Stay away from my childhood. Don't touch it. <laughs> you cannot be like every other thing that is remaking my childhood. Just stop it. Hey, don't worry. Oh. The last, the last Airbender is getting a, a real time no! TV show. No, why did no! you have to bring this up? Why? No! Why did you have to remind me of this garbage? <laughs> they already tried that. You know how bad it was. It, it was, was awful. terrible. It was terrible. It was why? Terrible. No. <laughs> yes. Oh, Rose has a good one. Cheese cheesecake with jalapeno pepper jelly. Yeah, that's yes. also good. Pass. The jalapeno pepper jelly goes good on a lot of things, like cream it's cheese. Cream cheese. It's straight up it's a block cre- of cream yeah. cheese. It's because, well, and and that's really what cheesecake generally is, is just a mm-hmm. chunk of cream cheese. But we could talk yeah, about this for a while, but I it's think. it's prepped so much differently, and I don't <laughs> like cream cheese. And, mm, the consistency is different. Everything else doesn't line up. Can we just play the outro so that I shut up, please? I got I can tell. Let's... I have next week's topic, and it's not food for your sake, Beard. Thank God, because the next thing that Blue ruins for me, I might have to take a week off just for sanity's sake. Uh.
<laughs> oh man yeah next week let's do top three v- vacation locations oh jesus he's gonna ruin those entirely <laughs> oh. did you know that oh. in the in the water over there oh yeah well yeah okay problem? if it's if you if you talk about water we're gonna have we might have problems we're just no, gonna I, rename the show the blue ruins it show I, I, i'm game for that i completely endorse this change i am 100 percent entirely for it I'm happy to be a part of this plan. This instantly sounds like Ghostbusters. Let's do it. <laughs> well, thank you guys for joining us this week for top three. Remember next week, we're going to be doing vacation locations and everybody loves a list. Really didn't mean for everything to break your beard. Mm. Oh, speaking of next week, I will actually not be here next week. So top three will be two weeks from now. So you have a longer time to think, figure things out. Well, then you should have given me a better thing to really think about. What the heck? Hashtag. Um, I mean, pew, I could pew. have done like pew, top pew. three anime of all time, but we kind of already did that. Yeah, we did. See, you're not thinking on these topics, are you? I'm sorry, I'm just going from I'm going from the suggestion. I'll uh go sit in the corner. That's what I thought. (laughs) That's what I thought. You're not you're not planning these things properly, Green. It's called a it's called an episode schedule. (laughs) It's called an episode schedule. (laughs) Have you ever YouTubed? Let me tell you something. That's how YouTube wants you to do it. Really? Anyway. Really? Do we want to talk about that? Do we want to talk about YouTube? I don't want to. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do are it. You, are you I, starting I, a new channel? I don't want to do it. I blue. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go grab more coffee, and I will be right back for a right. normal episode. Okay. 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 Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Bungie. I am so glad that my blues are finally rolling at 5.01. They are so generous and <laughs> wonderful and and gracious to start to allow that to happen. Please go fuck yourselves. <laughs> I just arrowed this guy out of the air. <laughs> I love the bow and arrow. I'm so, had, I'm so enjoying it. Better, yeah, I wish I had some betters for it. Extended magazine auto oh. clip and rampage on this thing. Okay. Oh, I got hit mark on it too. How the hell did I kill? Okay, that doesn't make any sense. Your face killed them. They couldn't stand looking at it. Hey, guess what? The hey, sunbreaker what? just got stuck in a corner and died. That was hilarious. <laughs> He popped, I mean, that's su- a good time. he popped his super and then got stuck in a corner. <laughs> and we just, we all just stood around the the wall <laughs> and watched him throw hammers at the the wall next to us. Aww. He was just like, I'm the, I'm the sad hammer right now. It was really funny. <laughs> I feel bad for the Titan. Uh, the, oh my god, that was awesome. I will likely have my new desk by next week. Nice! I'm so what, excited. Uh, what you kind sh- of desk did you get? That's well, that's fast. Have you? Like, Julie's built it. I was about to say because you guys were building it from scratch, weren't you? Mm, well, yeah, we uh, had Home Depot cut the pieces of wood for us, and we put it together in about two weeks. And it's kind of been sitting there for a week, and then we stained it. We have three layers of polyurethane that is water-based, and then we're going to epoxy it tomorrow. So it's a five-foot-long, 30-inch deep, and about three-inch, two-and-a-half to three-inch thick desk. It's going to be amazing. Is it a standing, or is it... Did you... I made it to where I would either I could do either. Okay, so it's a, is my, it like you can does it change or is it just uh, the height? No, it's just it's just really tall, and I have a monitor mount 
a four screen monitor mount that Julie got me. That was yeah, one of her nice. former clients. And so I'll be able to, if I want to stand, I'll be able to have one of my monitors, um, my gaming monitor up really high and be able to use it that way. Nice. Yeah, yeah. I just got, I just got two single monitor boom arms to put my monitors mm. on. God, it opens up so much desk space. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited to have this monitor mount. You have no idea. And that means I get another monitor, which I get to go and buy. Are you going to do while. a gaming monitor? Or put like your game on it? Or are you? I really should. Because I have my right now I'm playing Destiny on a TV. I got for $35 from Hastings. Nice. About seven no eight or nine years ago and it's an hd tv but it's really i don't know i'd like to have a, a little bit nicer monitor for it yeah no that makes sense but yeah that's what's going on so how are we doing this one? Hmm. How are we doing this episode? The same as we always do. Try to take over the world! I love I'm that show. I'm going to say the same thing we do every night, thank you. <laughs> I mean, the last, every single night for the last two weeks I've been playing Destiny, so I don't know if, I mean, I guess I'll kind of be doing that. That's what I'm doing right now because I don't get to play any other time in the week. No? I'm sorry, Beard. It's fine. <laughs> you sound so wide awake. <laughs> uh, I already told you I'm going to be a big grump for this, right? It's appropriate. Well, it's, it's going to be fitting. Yeah, it's appropriate. Because we're is... talking about Broken Vanguard. Oh, I, I'm going to say I don't even know what the topic is, I'll be completely honest. <laughs> I'm just looking at this week going, what the frick even is going on? Shadow, yes, I hear you. Good grief, pupper. Sir, could you stop sniping me? You're not even involved in this event. <laughs> You're not even involved. <laughs> That makes me so happy. <laughs> Apparently, Sleepy Beard makes everybody else really happy. That's good to know. I mean, I I've just love that. Sleep Sir, can you please stop sniping me? <laughs> you are not involved in this event. <laughs> I mean, okay. I've got to witness Sleepy Beard at Guardian Con. You made me pretty happy then, too. This is true. You have. Oh, Jesus Christ, this is going to explode in my head. And it's not the kind of right excuse. All right, no, go away. Punch all the things. Actually, palm all the things. Whatever you know what I mean. I'm like, a are you playing Titan? No. <laughs> no. No. Just, just, just let me have my moment, okay? Okay. Thanks. Oh Jesus Christ! Why do I have to load this thing? Uh... Ever came up with the idea of reloading items? Is a jackass. Doom guy doesn't have to reload shit. Oh! Oh, please tell me Sir, he just went off. I, oh. I was going to say, please this. tell me that Titan just went off the map. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Green, I don't... How do you want to do the... Um, the timer? Yeah. I'm going to start the timer essentially as soon as you... Start the uh, uh the the music is when I'm gonna start it. Okay, which and is like just thirty seconds. As, in. Are we just using it as a chrono, or are we gonna use it as a countdown timer? I'm gonna use it as a chrono. Okay. That way, we don't have to worry about if we go over. When you get better rewards from a guy that's just walking around than you do from a heroic event that you do solo. I feel cheesed. Yeah, RNG has been real interesting. RNG is the biggest bitch. It can be. 
I am at 543 right now. So I'm feeling pretty good. But... If RNG was a person, I would punch it in the face. That's all I got. I'm not allowed Tell to weigh in you. on this conversation. Oh. I now I'm concerned. I don't know why. But I'm concerned. <laughs> because Green hates it when I talk about RNG. Because he's got fucking amazing <laughs> RNG. <laughs> <laughs> like everybody's salty about not getting blue. exotics blue's like what what's wrong Everything's I, don't, fine. I don't understand why everyone's <laughs> I complaining i haven't gotten a single exotic since day one there i got uh, uh forsaken. Mm -hmm. look everybody knows that bungie gave out too many exotics when d2 came out okay yeah i can agree with that I did finally get my Skyburner's Oath, though. Yeah, it's, that's a lot of fun. Oh, my God. Changes. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, it, it's just like, I'm like, it's a mini grenade launcher. <laughs> like, just mm -hmm. here, you have one, and you have one, and you have one. Ah, <laughs> uh, yep. I'm ready when you guys are. <clears throat> All right. You already got your coffee. <clears throat> mm -hmm. All right. I speedy. All righty. I'm just making sure you didn't forget about your coffee. That's all. No, I all got right. it. And I have water you... here, too, because I'm actually t being good and hydrating at the same time as dehydrating. It balances out in the end. Hey, I have I have water, too, and coffee, too. It's too bad it's not the coffee I like. That's fine. I'm just I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just going to be a a big pain in the ass tonight. I just I'm warning you. It'll make for some interesting sound bites. This is what happens when Beard gets tired, everybody. All right. All right. Yep. All right. It's that's a Kamehameha. <laughs> that's a Kamehameha. <laughs> Uh huh. I don't even remember. I don't know the real name of that super. That's That's, all that I call is the real name of that super. <laughs> that is. It is Gohan's one armed Kamehameha against Cell. Okay? That is exactly what it is. And what nobody is can actually, tell me otherwise. What is it actually called? I no, don't I, know. No idea. <laughs> it just, it's, it's the Kamehameha. Know, like nobody it's... else needs to know. No one, no one knows. Okay? All right. Bungie doesn't know. even know at this point. No, they don't. They're also going to call it the Kamehameha, except they can't because Akira Toriyama is going to look at him and be like, pay me. Well, or oh, the, chaos Hawaii, the nation of, of Hawaii will call him that on that as well. No, no. There's a no, King no. Kamehameha. Yeah, but they... All right, look, Kamehameha in that terming? No, mm -mm, no. They... Hawaii was all like DBZ yeah, you, fight before the show. You named a you named a a move after our king. That's pretty freaking awesome. They don't care. The only ones that do care is freaking Shueisha because Shueisha is a pile of shit. Chaos <laughs> Reach. Yeah, that's... Chaos Reach. That's what it's called. Uh, Somebody says weird. it, and I always remember it, and I'm just like, yeah, that. That's that not catchy at funny. all. No, it's not. Kamehameha is so much better. It's like Tickle Fingers. Tickle Fingers are... <laughs> tickle like Fingers is the name of it. Like, it's... Tickle, tickle Finger, color. yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Although Emperor Palpatine had its run for a little while. For That's that true. one, at least. Yeah. I, uh... I call the... The Void One, uh, Ultra Instinct. Because that's exactly what it is. You're dodging around all over the damn mm -hmm. place. Okay. You ready, Blue? He's been ready. He's just like I'm. Just waiting. For I'm chasing to people. I'm up. I'm chasing people around an iron banner with a bow at the moment. I'm on a oh. ten kill spree. <laughs> Come here with a bow. Oh yeah, <laughs> this is amazing. I love Both the are bow. Pretty Both good are pretty job. Rocking. I gotta be honest. I also figured out if with the bow you can um, dead shot like hip shot him and then punch him and it's yep. an it's a kill. Like you, yep. you hit them with a bow. If it's fully drawn back, you pop them, and then just knife them, <laughs> and they die. Yep. <laughs> it's like and it's it, so easy. It has as good of accuracy as shotguns do, anyway. So. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like 
Oh my god! Especially if you get a one of the combat bows that have the the hip fire bonus on it. Uh huh. I'm surprised so. how many precision hits I can land on PC mm-hmm. with that damage. I know. Thing. Yeah, it's pretty crazy, actually. Mm-hmm. Um. Okay. Cool. All right. You guys good? <clears throat> we were waiting on you, Jay. All right. Let's go. Today's chat is brought to you by the support of all our Twitch subscribers. Through the patronage you provide the Focus Fire chat team through the Twitch platform, we are able to provide you with the weekly podcast as well as the website and other aspects of Focus Fire chat. If you have any interest in becoming a subscriber of the FFC and gaining access to some exclusive features over in the Discord server, please be sure to visit our Twitch account and click on the subscribe button. If you're an Amazon Prime member, remember that you do have a free subscription to Twitch every month that can be used for this. And for those of you who are already subscribers, thank you again for your generosity. You may have heard the whispers of guardians gathering in the shadows, exploring the mysteries of this world and the worlds which surround us. We are all in search of truth. Sometimes we need to focus that search, focus that fire. And so we come together. Join us. Join the discussion. Welcome to Focused Fire Chat. Welcome back for episode 144 of Focus Fire Chat, recorded live on September 21st over on twitch.tv slash focusfirechat. As always, I want to give a big shout out to our live chat here with us tonight. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Our topic for tonight's episode is going to be a look at a broken vanguard. But first, let's run through a quick introduction of those on the show for tonight. As always, this is your host, Blue Crew 86 Next up, we have our own master of social media, the one and only green-eyed music lover. Green, I hope you're doing well. How has the week treated you so far? I am trying to kill people in Iron Banner, and it's not going well at the moment, but I am doing well otherwise. Thank you for asking. <laughs> and rounding out the usual team, we have the man who is known far and wide as the Destiny lore content cop, the one and only Beard Grizzly. Beard, how are you doing tonight? Everybody is wrong except me. <laughs> <laughs> We're such a peppy group. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm shooting things in Tangled Shore right now because it's the first time all week I I've think been able to. The best clip so far from Beard tonight has been Look, you, you don't need to snipe me. You're not involved in this event. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, oh. I'm, I'm over here in Tangled Shore shooting up things in a heroic event. And all of a sudden, I start getting plinked by this fallen from like the back. <laughs> back catwalk and i'm just like dude get out of here you're like your your spawn zone is over there my spawn zone of enemies that i'm worried about is right here go away anyway that's been my night i hope Uh. yours has been good too well last week we asked the community i think who oh green help me here who would be the best hunter replacement who do you think should be the best hunter or the next Van- Hunter Vanguard. I got a, a comment on it from Beard himself about, is it would or should? <laughs> is Because phrasing matters. Yes, especially in this case. Yes. So it was, who do you think should be the next Hunter Vanguard? And we had a lot, a lot of people have some very big opinions on this. Um, I put f- only four options because Twitter is has limitations. And, you know, it's it's what it is. So the four options I put were Shiro 4, Ephrodite, Marcus Wren, or to have kind of a control group, no one. And what ended up happening after 400 and some odd votes, people <laughs> wanted... Uh, Shiro, which I kind of saw coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, people want Shiro. I get it. I kind of, I kind of wish not because I don't think Shiro is that fleshed out of a character yet. I mean, it'd be nice to get him fleshed out, but I don't know. 
What ended up happening is 55% of people wanted Shiro, 15% wanted Ephrodite, 13% thought Marcus Wren, and 17%, which was kind of the surpriser for me, wanted um, no one. They hmm. didn't, they thought that, and I can't remember who was commenting on this, and I'm sorry because I don't have it pulled up right away. Um, he basically said, since we don't have a new speaker, why should we have a new hunter vanguard? Ooh, that is That's a dangerous a, Yeah, but it's a good point. I mean, kind of. In yeah. some ways. <clears throat> I mean, we're really not sure about the hunter vanguard to begin with. We, they're they're based around the dare, of course, but we, mm -hmm. we still don't necessarily understand the stipulations of said dare entirely, which I'm still kind of surprised with. Uh, right. But we also see some stipulations between, I think it's uh, Caliban 8 and uh, Tallulah Fairwind and some of the newer uh, lore entries as well. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. We see how that kind of goes down and how there were, how there was a change of hands that way as well. Uh, and I don't know if it officialized that Caliban was, uh, was made as a, a Hunter Vanguard, but that is just something to... To show off as another point, like the the hunter vanguard is uh, seemingly a more dangerous position than some of the others are for some reason. There's a lot of death that surrounds it. Well, that and, I mean, they are kind of responsible. It kind of seems like the the hunters are responsible for the bounties, mm -hmm. so they they track like they're the ones that tend to seem to track the the uh, what's the kind way of saying the assassination targets of the yep. the city. <laughs> So they tend to probably attract some wrath as well. Yeah, very true. That is true. That is true indeed. So, with that being said, sorry, I was reading. I was reading chat. Um, like Pat, like the chat right now is making the point that like if you played a hunter, I can see Cade would have tried to put the bet on the player. I mean, mm -hmm. the thing the thing is, is with the dare from and this kind of goes back to what Beard was just kind of saying is like, we don't really know the conditions of the dare. Uh, if we go off of the dare between Andal and Kate, which actually we got a little bit of clarity with that, um, with the new information, the uh, the dare between them was basically who could survive a battle with Tanix, which, you know, kind of sets the stage for the whole situation for uh what was that the shadow thief strike yeah uh, and that kind of explains Cade's um hate like hate I, yeah hatred towards tanix uh you also see that in uh the no not truth to power the uh most loyal uh entries where Varix tries to talk to Cade in the in the bar in the tangled shore he mentions tanix and Cade mm -hmm. nearly like Cade nearly takes him out like he, he Tanix is a very sore subject with Cade because of the Vanguard Dare, not just because he lost, but because in losing he lost a friend as well. So I mean the Dare the Dare does definitely seems to be something of a very dangerous stipulation as well. And Cade's not one to like go off the handle very quickly. No, so have that happen. Yeah, it's, uh, pretty. It should should give some stress to how much Andal meant to him. Mm -hmm. But I think that's why a lot of people also went with Shiro because of how much Shiro uh, and Cade seem to have gotten along over the course of time. Uh, we still don't know exactly everything behind them, of course. Uh, but there are a lot of uh, connections between the two of them. Uh, so much so that, of course, uh, Shiro is, uh, is Cade's... Uh, or should say it this way because it's a little easier. Cade is Shiro's mentor. Right. Uh, so at least in terms of that, that would actually put us in same or equal terms as how it was with Andal to Cade. So it would just kind of follow from student downward, basically. Mm -hmm. But I mean, and then there is also the argument there that that's where the dare comes in too, because yep. there was no, there was no um, compulsion there is no compulsion for shiro to step into the vanguard position like right. that's that's the entire point of the dare is that's the only way the vanguard can basically rope the hunters into it 
because they're such they're such uh, wild spirits and you know wanderers. They have they have very strong wanderlust, and yep. so for them to. And I think Cade, I think Cade actually mentions that in his, uh, in the entries that we'll probably talk about a little bit here at once the show really starts, but uh, he, he mentions that, you know, a hunter is only as good as their word. And if mm-hmm. nothing else, if nothing else, that's what you hold to. Like, it doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter who you are. If you're, if you're a hunter, you hold to your word. And that's where the dare kind of, kind of, it's the loophole that the Vanguard uses to kind of keep them on a leash a bit yeah so um but obviously i know we have uh some some pretty powerful thoughts on that one so let's run through our standard intro real quick and then we'll get right into it in our last episode of focus fire chat we discussed the new information about the awoken if you ever miss an episode and would like to catch up please be sure to check out focusfirechat.com for archives articles and links to the other aspects of focus fire chat If you don't mind, please rate and, if you can, review the show on iTunes, Podbean, or whichever podcasting app you use to enjoy podcasts. Reviews are extremely helpful as they not only let us know what we can do better, but help us stay up on charts, which help others find our amazing community. To those of you who have already taken the time to leave us a review, thank you. As many of you already know, Focus Fire Chat is a cross-community gathering where the intent is to offer a week-long, in-depth view of a particular subject from within the lore of Destiny and other games. This chat begins every Tuesday morning and runs until the following Tuesday, with topics decided by the group via a poll that begins every Friday and ends on the Tuesday morning of the new chat. Every Friday at around 10 p.m. Central, we get together to stream a high-level summary of the previous week's chat for those who are unable to participate. Please be sure to also give some support to the other podcasts in the Guardian Radio Network, links of which can be found on our website. If you're a fan of lore in all its various forms, be sure to also check out thelorenetwork.com, where you can find a wide variety of some amazing content that covers a number of different titles and mediums. Our next chat is going to be a discussion on the Drifter's Gambit lore booklet. Note that we will not have a poll this weekend as we are going to set aside next week's discussion for a summarization of the extra lore content for September, Cyberpunk 2077. I actually stole the summary from Green this week, so forgive me if I don't do the the normal justice. Modern psychological views on the concept of dealing with loss began to be fully explored in 1969 with the publication of On Death and Dying by Dr. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. It was here that we see the formal introduction of the five stages of loss. The first, denial and isolation. The second, anger. Third, bargaining. Fourth, depression. And fifth, acceptance. Today, we see a much more diverse view of this process, with the underlying theme remaining, which views each individual as having unique needs in regards to both the manner and duration of the grieving process. The important thing to keep in mind when discussing grief or mourning is that this is a process, not a state of mind. Every individual will process the loss in their own way and at their own pace. Generally, it is seen that there are four major tasks which are used as benchmarks to assist and or determine the state of the individual who is experiencing grief. Task 1 is accepting the reality of the loss. Task 2 is working through the pain of grief. Task 3 is adjusting to the environment in which the deceased is missing. And task 4 is emotionally relocating the deceased and moving on with their life. In the same way that one will experience the cubular Ross stages in a non-linear fashion, we will often see the undergoing of these tasks being completed in a rather unique fashion. Further in the discussion here, it is important to note that the grief of soldiers does not, nor arguably can, follow the what is referred to as the traditional prescription for grief and mourning. This was detailed in depth with D. Grossman's 2009 publication on killing the psychological cost of learning to kill in war and society, in which he argues that the grief of a soldier is significantly different when it involves killing human beings. While this process is similar to that of Cupola Ross, there is a greater magnitude and intensity for the soldier. In this situation, Grossman makes the point that the goal of grief resolution is that of reaching a point at which the individual is, quote, neither depressed nor angry about their fate, end quote. Note that the universe of Destiny is a fictional creation. The opinions stated within this episode on the nature of the responses of characters within this universe to the death of a loved one is uniquely specific to these unrealistic contexts. 
The reactions of the characters and our analysis of those reactions need to be noted as existing outside of the scope of any realistic paradigm. Before we jump into the information and thoughts the community had about the Vanguard, however, let's have a quick chat about this week's Lost Lore. All right, so uh, real quick, this Lost Lore is going to be a pretty quick one. Uh, it's just really a um, a distinction, I guess, between the terms. I know this is kind of shifting into more of a semantics piece more than Lost Lore uh, these last couple times. But this one is really, I just kind of want to draw a distinction between grief and mourning. Those terms are often used interchangeably, and they're actually from a, uh, I guess, an academic standpoint. Uh, not. They're not synonymous. Uh, grief is usually, um, <clears throat> excuse me, grief is usually identified as the internal experience of loss, and mourning is the external expression of grief. Uh, what this basically translates into in thanatological studies is that everyone will experience grief, however, not everyone mourns. And so that is a really important distinction to remember uh, in reality, as well as, you know, in our discussion here, when we're talking about, you know, the different reactions of the different members of the Vanguard, everyone has different, obviously unique reactions to trauma. And if you are, you know, in the camp where you think that Cade's death is not a traumatic event, especially for the two remaining members of the Vanguard, I'm sorry to say, but that's, that's not the, not the case. Uh, it's, it's very traumatic. It's, a, that's a huge trauma to them almost probably as much as the the events of Destiny 2's vanilla campaign where they lost their light. Um, and so the, the, it's, it's just an important thing to remember that, you know, especially with regards to the difference in the way that they express their grief, Zavala is very stoic, Ikora is not very stoic. Um, the external expression is what we're going to be probably primarily talking about. I think that's just an important distinction. And I and I'm the only reason I'm kind of really hammering home this this idea that, you know, we are analyzing fictional characters is because this is actually this is actually a really touchy topic. Um, and I recognize that, especially because this is actually a topic that I spent a number of years researching um, in my in my own life. As far as my degree, uh, I have a degree in thanatological studies. So it, it's something that I am actually pretty cognizant of um and i've seen both really really healthy uh healthy practices and i've also explored really unhealthy practices um and i think i will close this off with saying you know obviously if there is a situation in which someone is needing to talk you know, again we've said this before on the show but please reach out to us uh and Please don't take anything that we're saying here as a judgment on anything realistic because this game, it's a game. It is a video game. Um, and so that's where I'm going to kind of just leave that. I don't know, Green Beard, if you guys wanted to weigh in on that or if we wanted to jump into just the, the analysis, I guess. Well, per usual, I always do have my, uh, my Discord does have a help and rant right, that's uh, right, channel that's, right. that's built into it. Uh, so if you guys ever do need to just go into a place that uh, can kind of allow for a, for a channel like that, just feel free, drop in. It's completely open to everybody. Uh, no matter what the topic might be, let us know if you're comfortable about talking with it. If not, and you just want to say, I'm not okay, I need, I need just somebody to talk with right now, we get it. Uh, we are all at different levels when it comes to accepting like where we're at in our lives and that could be any number of things realistically mm -hmm. uh, so yeah if you guys ever need to just come vent whatever i will try to listen if i can if i'm free uh and if i am not free then i've got plenty of other people that are willing to step up and talk with you about it too so we are we are always i i think that is one thing that i've always liked about the destiny community in general we've always been very open about working with each other talking to each other 
uh, and not really wanting to to hide that uh, very much at all. Uh, and in addition, there are uh, other groups that do a fantastic job of it as well, like the uh, Saint Fourteen Project. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, that's right. who I was going to mention. Yeah, yeah, Saint Fourteen are a fantastic group of guys, uh, guys and gals, and they do some fantastic work for uh, mental health. Because I know one of the things that they had mentioned from last year with Guardian Con is that they want to try to get a uh, a booth together uh, to make it so that if you're a little overwhelmed or something, you can drop in, say hi. Uh, and just have like a kind of a safe spot to to settle down for a little while, uh, but definitely a a good group of people that also understand how mental faculty works in and terms of knowledgeable. Either... Yes. like I did an episode with these guys, and they are quite intelligent. Like they have a doctor on there, yeah. or a guy who practices, and it's it's interesting to hear him go through different topics. And what they do is they don't necessarily diagnose anybody or anything like that like that is not within their purview they just mm. talk about different um, types of mental health struggles that people tend to have and offer up um, some suggestions for how to live with whatever thing that you're living with or how to seek out help more importantly they provide so many different um different projects and community groups that work on those different topics. Like the one episode that I was on, we went over, um, it's not bipolar disorder, but they went over um, uh, personality disorder. If I remember. Yeah, it was personality disorder and it was really interesting. And we talked about it from a video game standpoint first, but that um, was very mild in comparison to the main bulk of the topic mm -hmm. of how to find help and how to recognize signs of it and how it's defined not necessarily how you um diagnose anybody with it because that is such a fluctuating pendulum mm -hmm. half the mm -hmm. time but how you can be more aware of these things mm -hmm. so yeah i mean i mean and the only reason we're kind of kind of hammering that bit home is because again like i said this is for me i am i am super um sensitive i guess about this topic uh and i and we'll probably get into that a little bit because i i my personal reaction to stress is very different from the average individuals uh or well not average but like the the norm or considered norm um and so I kind of actually am more in the camp of I really agree with Zavala and his response to it. While I know a lot of more the more outspoken individuals uh, have kind of sided with Ikora's response and, you know, all that, which is to be expected for that type of personality. Um, but like there's there's just a lot of nuanced differences um, and so I don't want, if we come across as harsh or critiquing anything, I don't want that to be translated into our view on a real context because it's not, if that makes sense. Um, but that, yeah, so I, I'll, 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 sh I'll, uh, shelve that entire statement for the time being, because I know everyone's here for a video game analysis, not necessarily, <laughs> not necessarily a, a preaching, but, um, so okay, let's jump. Let's jump into it. Let's just jump right into it. Uh, we have really we're going to be focusing on Zavala and Ikora, uh, but I do think that it is worth noting that you know these are not the only the only major individuals in the tower even that have reactions to it. Uh, this this uh, past week on Twitter, I kind of was posting um, quotes from a lot of different individuals within the tower. Uh, and it and it's talking, you know, just really about how how they respond to stress and how they respond to, you know, carrying on, really. Mm -hmm. And so I guess my who, which one do we want to start with? Do we want to start with uh, Zavala? Do we want to start with Ikora? Do you well, guys have a preference? Let's start with Ikora, because I think that Zavala is in some ways I want to hear your take on Zavala since you can you can relate to what he's or not relate mm -hmm. but empathize with how he's yeah. feeling. Yeah. And 
I don't. I am very, I'm still very upset with Zavala, even after reading the cards mm -hmm. and seeing what he's going through. I'm still really upset with him because that's not how I would have reacted. There's only one thing that really irks me about Zavala right now, and that's uh, more as a side note, but it's him being so willing to put the forces of the uh, of the vanguard right towards the reef, like as quickly as he did. Uh, that is my biggest gripe that I think I have right well, now when it comes down to him. Didn't he want to bring the reef like him? There's a card with him and Petra where he wanted to bring the people of the reef to the city and Petra refused. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so Zavala didn't want to commit too much to the reef. In... Yeah, except for the entirety of the vanguard. I mean, yeah, yeah. We're, what, what do you mean? I, 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 I must have missed that part. So, yeah. I, I'll I guess. Admit, well, I'll let's just talk about Zavala because I mean, we're already there. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, it's 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 a hard thing to. It's a very touchy subject at this point because I know a ton of people who are real mad at Zavala for the way he's acting. Uh -huh. I mean, I'll be I'll be quite transparent. I was really pissed at Zavala with the way that he reacted in Warmind, f actually for the exact reason that I'm actually really okay with his reaction in this expansion. Because it didn't go along with his, like, the personality that they've presented him. Mm -hmm. um, it was very, his his reaction in Warmind was very out of character for how they have presented him in the grimoire and in the in the game. Um, yeah. And it, it was really, it was really kind of confusing, really, more than anything, which is where my frustration with him for that expansion kind of stemmed from. Whereas, like, his reaction here... So, you know, again, looking at Zavala, just looking at our initial introduction to Zavala, we kind of get it, a sense that this is going to be his reaction to stress. Um, if you look at his the Grimoire card from Destiny 1 with Zavala, it's got a he, he mentions a a poet from Edo, Japan, uh, Bato or Basho. Mm -hmm. uh, Basho. Um, if you if you delve into the the poetry of this individual you'll find that he actually deal he's a very um he's he's an individual that went through a lot of trauma in his own time uh some of it was self-inflicted he he was one of the uh, really big proponents of living a poverty or a uh a simplistic lifestyle he was uh, a he was a renowned traveler he traveled quite a bit and he made a point of kind of you know, not really having a area that he had roots involved in. Um, and, and so, you know, part of it is like, you know, it's not necessarily, it, it wasn't like he had a bad hand dealt to him. He chose a lot of this, but the other thing that he did was he, he really pushed for transcendence of emotions um, in the sense that, you you recognize that emotions are there and you recognize you know that you have them as responses but you don't let them dictate what you do and there are things such as honor and duty that will will always take precedent take. um i guess yeah in a way Not, the vulcan I, I guess if you look yeah, at a really well, oversimplified I, vulcanism yeah kind well, of i would it's... say spock and more specifically because spock has the emotions because of his human half versus the Vulcan race who tends to not embrace those at all. Yeah, it's it's fairly close to that. Uh even then it's yeah, they, I guess it depends on how much you want to get into the debate on what Vulcans actually uh, are. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. I'm going to say because that tends to be a very loaded question to begin with. Right. Uh the the entire the entirety of that conversation though definitely does get kind of uh it gets broad, but I guess if you do want to simplify it, yeah, the the idea of casting out emotion is the the idea of it. But Zavala is doing it for such different reasons, right? Where Vulcans are doing it for the sake of quote unquote bettering themselves or what they believe is bettering themselves, uh, only because emotion drives them uh, to a higher point of. Uh, more emotion than what most human beings even can be, as I know Spock's father has put it a couple times. Uh, I would probably say that they do it for the sake of making sure that their people don't go 
the way of the Romulan too much. Right. Because that's, of course, the, the counter argument that you can make is that the Romulans get so... They, they get so bent I'm out of shape. About Star Trek like, <laughs> as much as I am, um, yeah, they get they're they're very touchy about everything so quickly, uh, compared to what you'll find, of course, with a good majority of uh, of Vulcans. And there are still some Vulcans that feel that like emotion is the uh, the proper way. If we want to take uh, you know Final Frontier as a is that Final Frontier? No, uh, uh, I can't remember it now. Yeah, but th- Star Trek uh, Five, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, Oh, um, Spock's brother, uh, Savick, I think it is, uh, is, is a large proponent of, uh, of how emotions actually can help the betterment of the Vulcan people. Uh, and he starts to look around for like Shakari and all that, which is what they basically call, uh, the Vulcans call, uh, the Garden of Eden, which is where everything ends up, uh, culminating from the universe. Uh, but this entirety is shunned by the Vulcans because it uh, starts to be a problem for them, if you will. Uh, it starts to be a uh, an emotional trip that they have to be very mindful of. Uh, but yeah, long story short, before I really do carry on this this whole thing, Zavala is doing it for the ideas of being a tactician uh, and being the betterment of it, being a leader which I can understand the more that I'm there. But initially, from an emotional response, uh, he obviously doesn't have one because he's trying to take the better side of everything. Because as much as we've also said about uh, Basho, the other piece of it would also be Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu, yep. Sun Tzu is, uh, he's, he's quoted Sun Tzu and a couple other uh, major tacticians from ancient history uh, but Sun Tzu is his largest one that he quotes. Mm-hmm. And Sun Tzu's overall ideas are just think ahead of of what your opponent is going to do. Uh, and and like some of Sun Tzu's like famous things are more like think about the land that you're on, think about how your position is versus your enemy. Uh, never be below your uh, your enemy and never run uphill towards them. Stuff like that. Uh, and these are the the kind of wear down tactics that uh, Sun Tzu is all about. Well, Zavala embraces those very well, and he understands that he, as he says, the, we are not conquerors. We are not an army. We are not something that can uh, stand up to to effectively what is a force uh, like is now, what is now being presented to us. So, again, before I keep carrying this on, I'll I'll stop here. But it's important to kind of note the differences between how Zavala's uh, tactician ways are versus something like Ikora's iconoclastic ways. And I was uh, about I to say that too. Of, yeah. Yeah. Like I can see both of them. Uh, I don't agree with Zavala's take because that's not personally where I am. And as much as I am somebody that will still uh, understand both sides, I know that eventually I have to choose a side. Uh, and Zavala's is the side that I personally cannot agree with or the side that I would be on. But I do so understanding, as Zavala also puts it in the Forsaken, uh, at the end of it all, that there is going to be consequences that we are going to have to face by the end of it as well. Uh, there, are, there are ups and downs that we have to take with the, uh, the, the points that we decide to attack or, or garner as uh, our individual selves may be or as a group may be. Uh, and Zavala is really just looking out for humanity as a whole. Uh, anyway, yeah, I think I rambled on enough about that. It's uh, it's just important to know the differences between them. Yeah, and I think that's really, um, you know, I, I think that ramble, as you call it, is actually really along the lines of what I was going to say, too. You see that histor- historically Zavala's character is exactly that, a really kind of, a really um, even keel, like, you know, I see chat chat right now is talking about how he he's he's walling off his emotions and he's you know, he's trying to lock he's, out the he's trying to lock out but, the universe, but he's not. I, I mean, would if, say he's the exact opposite. He is he he struggles with it just as much as I yeah, does, which is why the yep. quote the quote on the Vanguard card, if you notice, it says undated battle notes mm-hmm. yep. and he says Basho had it right. We struggle after. I mean, there's there is a way there's a way that they can twist that to see that that is notes that he has made after the Forsaken events, 
Like, cause we don't know right. when these grow more cards. Now, I mean, was there that much forethought? You know, we can argue that all we want, but the, the nice thing about that is Basho actually has poems or haikus really, um, about the struggle of mortality and like how you handle that and what is, what is going on within those, within those conflicting points. Um, Z in chat right now is, you know, quoting Sun Tzu as well. And the thing is, is like, and I hear you, Beard, I, I do. I would argue, though, and I think I think you kind of said this, but I just wanted to revisit it. Z- it's not that Zavala is not choosing a side. Zavala is choosing a side. Well, he's, he's choosing just, his side. He's cho- I'm, I understand right, right, that I but need I mean, to choose a side by the end of it as well. Right, uh, and what I'm yeah, saying he, is that, but I'm what I'm saying is I've seen a, a number of people being like, well, Zavala just doesn't want to get involved. No, Zavala is involved. Yep. He's just choosing to protect his own people. He's, and this yes. is where you kind of get that sense of like, you know, his, like what you were saying with the quote of like, we're not an army, we're not conquerors. No, you're guardians. Guardians guard, they protect, they don't, they don't hunt down and kill. I mean, and there's, there's also, a, there's a very thin line that they've danced on that because, you know, kind of, and I think we were kind of talking about this a little bit before the intro credits and even a bit before the show started, you know, the hunter dare, you know, there's, mm-hmm. there's a, there's a reason that the hunters kind of, you know, ignoring the, the trivial and the almost frivolous kind of, oh, well, hunters don't like being stuck in one place at a time. No, the problem is also that the hunter vanguard is in charge of the bounty board. You know, they're they're the ones who hand out the assassination orders for the protection of the city. They are the ones that put priorities on targets and say this this individual needs to be taken off the taken off the board. And so there's also a degree of danger, because if those individuals who have been assigned to be taken off decide that they kind of want to push back, well, the individual they push back against is going to be the one who put the hit on them. And so there's also that. So it's not that Zavala is a po- and I mean, geez, the 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 I guess it's a meme now. The quote from Zavala about uh, Cerberus Vey. I mean, yeah. Zavala is not no he he's not shy about calling for the the beheading of a snake, right? But there's a there is a a tactical difference in what we see in Forsaken, in that we are not we are not leading a surgical strike. We are actually yeah. leading a and, you know, and arguably leading an army into a place to to police it, to domesticate it, to pacify it, you know, whatever word you want to use there. But that is not a strike. That is actually a campaign against that area. Yep. And the same is also now true of like the Dreaming City and how much right, is right. offered there. But and that's that's where I was saying earlier why I'm a little conflicted and confused with how Zavala uh, was so willing to offer up the uh, the Vanguard's resources to Petra the way that he was. I know that we've been tenuous at best when it comes down to the the reef and how we can uh, how we can kind of see them as friends. But that that really just kind of burned me when I uh, when I read that. I was like, Are you talking about when uh, the Paladin uh, Rior was like, yes, "Come help us," yeah. and then Zaval is like, "God gave her a nod." Yeah, I guess he said what <sighs> yeah. he did to the to the uh, to like everybody out there. I was like, all right, if anything was like a backdrop to how all of this would be, like even even Kamala is sitting there, like looking at Zavala, like this is completely out of character for you, uh, right. and it just feels like it's entirely out of character. Uh, mm-hmm. But that that instance was the final nail in the coffin for me to say. I don't know what is going on with Zavala. I am confused about Zavala. Uh, the position that he seems to be taking up seems to be one that is uh, contentious to his own whims and nothing else. And that is a really big problem when it comes down to how they're either telling the story of him or what they're attempting to do with him. Now, I'm anxious to see how it unravels all the same, but that point right there really kind of... It makes me question what the entirety of his uh, reasoning for not going after Cade I, would have been almost entirely. You know, it, I, mm-hmm. it contradicts those those actions. You know, I kind of, I see Blue's point more on this aspect of it. Like, I'm still mad at him. Oh, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not happy I with his decision. It. 
I but, see it, but it's a contradictory idea. That's that's all. Like I, I want to just make that clear, if nothing else, uh, before I before I let you go, Green. I'm sorry. Um, no, it's okay. It's, it's just... I, it, it just feels like there is something weird about what he is doing there, and then in another moment. Uh, anyway, you have to think about what the vanguard positions mean to not only the tower and guardians but also to the city mm-hmm. without at this point there's no speaker there's no there's the cons- not really a consensus anymore either the only you reason have, there's the only reason there is a consensus is because arguably zavala right and with that being said we also don't really have much of the factions doing much together besides like the f- initial rebuild after the red war so yeah. if zavala was to be like yes let's go ahead and go after them and Zavala is scared because this is Zavala showing his own a little bit of mortality, knowing mm-hmm. that that he is vulnerable with after the Red War. Ikora learned it firsthand a little bit harder, I think, than Zavala ever did because Zavala never went into. He had the initial Red War fight, and then he jetted like he forced Amanda Holiday to take him to Titan, and. It forced everybody out as much as he could and didn't really have that initial connection to his own mortality besides because he never mm. went into the fights. It didn't seem like it. Like he went okay. into the fight when um, they went after Gaul at the end. I, I would argue and just to interject really briefly, if I can, um, I would I would argue that the reason that we saw him push to return to Titan was because he was infinitely aware of his own mortality right Right. like he wanted to find a safe place to regroup and try again right he he wasn't ready to move directly into it he wasn't as impulsive Mm -hmm. as and even i would say ikora was not impulsive because she went to Mm -hmm. io and it wasn't until she got to io she realized that the cabal were already there and then she got mad right and Cade went to go find his own solution, his own way. But Zavala, Zavala, I think, is the only vanguard that seems to really weigh the balance of the city and the normal non-guardians against the, the possibility. It's the many Trump the one mm-hmm. mentality. And I understand it. I'm still really, really pissed at him for it. And I, I don't think he's a coward. And I know that some people really, really hate that, but I, I really wish that he could have an outlet to show some of that emotion and be angry and do like, I loved Ikora's reaction to the whole thing. Well, and and to be honest, you know, kind of going back to that outlet of emotions, that's why I really liked in the vanilla where you see him on Titan, where he like he kind of loses his temper. Yeah. Right. But he's you know, also I mean, terrified the whole time. Well, so is every other guardian. I mean, to be fair, you're talking about a group of demigod immortals who just got slapped in the face with mortality for the first time that in you know their entire memory. I'm going to say more so on like a, a larger scale because you still had ones that felt it like, uh, especially Eris, of course, going down into the, the hell mouth and whatnot. But having it more on a universal scale like that makes a big difference to how right. guardianhood in general is now challenged. And that and that was really the yeah. other phys, uh, sorry, that was the other philosophical debate that uh, Zavala was having as well, because, you know, that's where the yeah. question, what makes us guardians? If we right. don't have the, if, you know, I think that was the line. If we don't have the light, are we even like, what is it that may, I mean, that's, that was the whole paradigm shift conversation that we had is like, they have been challenged in a way that, you know, that they've, they've never had to evaluate that. It's like, you know, telling someone who's never had to self analyze what's going on with them, you know, hey, why do you do it this way? And not letting them leave until they answer a question like that. Like, People who don't, who aren't self-aware, they, they don't, they, like, that will completely, completely rock someone's expectations of reality. Yeah. 
And and I think that you see that precursor a little bit as well in in the vanilla campaign. I mean, that's why, again, you know, I keep going back. I, I honestly, of all of the events, the war mine piece is the only one that really stands out as not being Zavala's character. And that yeah. was because in the face of in the face of a a trauma traumatic like event which i mean arguably it's not even traumatic but like in the face of this weird stressful event he charged head first where every single time other than that he has he has carefully and tactfully retreated to a point where he could evaluate the situation and then applied you know applied the necessary what he saw as the necessary force to overcome the the uh the barrier which is exactly right. what he's doing in Forsaken, you know, and I, I'm going back a little bit, Beard, here to your comment about, you know, Pal, uh, Rior and Kamala or Kamala thinking that it's out of character form. You have to realize also that that's taking place after the events of Forsaken, right? That's that's already we've already established. Mm-hmm. We've already established that Aldrin is dead and the Dreaming City is open because that's what she's calling for. She's calling right. for guardians to come to the Dreaming City. Oh, and yeah. so the tact the tact. You know, the tactics in that situation, that context has fundamentally changed. It's no longer about extracting revenge. It's now about helping an ally defend their city. And so from that standpoint, it's a tact it's a tactically different um catalyst to yeah. engage in a battle. Whereas mm-hmm. prior he's saying, No, we are not we are not police for this you know, lawless area. And yeah. then, and, you know, there's, I can see the, the fundamental difference between those two situations. Um, I don't know if that makes sense though. Does that, does that kind of make sense? I, I mostly get it. Uh, I still, I still think that it's kind of weak on Zavala's angle because it's well, and, and, not going to, right. Yeah. I'm not going to put things out there yet, but now after this, um, now, after the the Guardian went out and did what they did, I'm a little bit more willing to do it. It just feels a little backwards to me. I, don't What's know. I, I can nice see that. I can see that. that. Yeah, we've had so many instances of seeing the humanity in Ikor, seeing the humanity in Cade. Like Cade has been faulted from the beginning. Like he's just a mess. Yeah. But we've never really saw Zavala as his own, like a human. Well, He's always and, been this pedestal, and mm-hmm. no, in sorry, some ways, sorry. this gives him that that touch of him. Like he's still being stoic, but regardless of what we see in game, and the fact that he's really kind of a jerk face in game, the mm-hmm. way he comes across, the cards show he's repentant in some respects. He's lost. He's trying to find his way. He's meditating on the whole thing. Him going to Io kind of cracked me up in a lot of ways because mm-hmm. going out there to see the thing that Ikora went to meditate about it's it's a slightly humanizing aspect even though he's still making these really difficult decisions and i think that's really important too to remember that the intro to destiny 2 really was a clip of zavala's rise we saw that zavala- is a terrifying phrase by the way what the rise of zavala well i mean i didn't mean it like that but i mean i guess you could take it that way but you know i i mean like you see the evolution of his character he you we see him when he was first raised we see him face at you know adversary after adversary trouble after trouble and like this the the just like absolutely unbuild unbending refusal to not give up you know, I, I think that was the other thing is like you see a bit of the humanity there. It's just and I think this kind of goes back to what Beard and I are were saying at the very beginning is I think it's just a different way to respond to the events. Right. And I mean, I, I completely and utterly understand people who don't uh, agree with it. But I, I do want to call people out and say, you know, not agreeing with Zavala is not to is not to say that he is wrong. It is just that it's right. a different way of dealing with uh, stress and trauma. And mm-hmm. if you think, I mean, I'll, I'll also kind of put the challenge out. If you th- 
I couldn't watch that or I can't watch the events of the Forsaken intro with Zavala and I can't help but see all the emotional turmoil in Zavala. He is not unemotional in that at all. He's just stoic. He's not mm-hmm. he's not allowing himself to sh- to ex- to mourn publicly, which mm-hmm. going back to again going back to Sun Tzu, to Basho, all these things is very in line with those teachings. Is you you don't allow you don't allow your troops to see that that aspect at least not you know you don't necessarily sit there and rend your robes over the death of a compatriot because in in an army you're not allowed to shut down it during battle right. and, and and to be fair and that's where kind of where the summary that I was mentioning to be fair that's something that we have to remember about Zavala is Whereas Ikora kind of has that history of the iconoclastic individual who who has no kind of no problem running his or her own way, and same with Cade, I think that's where their fire team was so balanced because Zavala was yeah. that stoic pillar who who kind of was like you know whether or not you want to say the downer of the group, he was the one that was like no this isn't the right thing to do. And he kind of right. was the he was the bridle and the the I guess the blinders a little bit that channeled the passion of Ikora and channeled the energetic you know nature of Cade into doing it's, the right thing. You have the extremes of all the all three personalities, right? Right. And be, with all three personalities together, you got it balanced. Kind Cade was kind of the swing point to help balance out the stoicism of both Ikora and Zavala because they can both be incredibly headstrong and stoic. Cade was there to help them remember to laugh and mm-hmm. keep their heads humor. up. Right. And he helped mm-hmm. keep their 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 spirits up. Like they would have fallen real low in a lot of things or had this quest for re- revenge. Because Ikora Ikora would be pretty bloodlusty. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, I'm gonna say arguably she still very much is for sure. Right, uh, she just really fits that bill. I, that's just her way. Like that's iconoclastic as a as a whole. That still fits her mo almost exactly. Right. Uh, but I was thinking about I've been I've been sitting here actually thinking about like why Zavala's tactics and whatnot sound so familiar. Uh, and it's funny that we bring up like the personality between uh, the the Vanguard members and whatnot. And I immediately think back to, and I know this this is this is only going to really fit to a certain subsect probably of our our listeners, but I think about George McCle- uh, McClellan from mm-hmm. the Civil War days. Yep, McClellan's yep. Uh, tactics were very stoic in how he approached everything. He was a very slow-minded individual in terms of how his tactics would field. Uh, he was responsible, unfortunately, for a lot of our uh, backtracking that happened, and it wasn't until uh, Ulysses Grant got in charge of uh, at least the Southern Army of the, of the Potomac that allowed for us to really push through uh, in Southern soil, etc. cetera. Uh, and that's real, really where you know the Yanks were able to, to really pull things around, uh, for better or worse, however you really want to see the Civil War. But that being said, and and not to bring up in those angles, it's just a it's just a, a fair balancing point to kind of see a, as like a historical figure or another one how those uh, points kind of venture and and how they kind of make sense to how destiny follows because Zavala very much is a George McClellan. He very much is somebody that will he'll he'll make the J hook at Gettysburg, for instance, and he'll sit there and wait out the Confederacy. Uh, and hope that it can go ahead and stand up against Pickett's charge and whatnot. Because if Lee was, it was nothing else. He was somebody that pushed, and he was mm-hmm. somebody that he was made sure aggressive. that he could push. Yep. And you had Grant that was very good at counteracting that. So those those were the ones that really kind of stood out to me, at least in terms of like who could alter or counter each other. Uh, but McClellan, for some reason, now that I think about it, that I'm I'm always going to think about that for when I think about Zavala and how he acts on the on the field or otherwise. 
No, I, I, I think that's an excellent point too. Um, I, I also really wanted to get your guys' feel on the idea, you know, we keep kind of throwing this out there in regards to Ikora, but like the, the descriptor of Ikora has always been the iconoclastic figure, right? Mm-hmm. Whereas Zavala has, um, for, for lack of a better terminology, Zavala has the spiritual strength. Like he has something that he believes in. He has a dream. He has, you know, the dream of the city, you know, everyone makes fun of him for it, but that's, that's a, that's a, a, yeah, it's a spiritual vision of his and not, not in like the religious connotation, but like in the sense that he has something upon which in times of great stress, he can fall back on. Um, And if you go back to just the, again, the definition of what it is to be an iconoclastic, it's to destroy your faith. Like it's, it's a very self individualistic self, self, uh, uh, promotional type thing. Uh, it's very, very, and not, not in a negative, not in the, like an a egotistical narcissistic way. It's just the, the, the always questioning, uh, the, the stated, you know, axioms and stuff like that which makes as a warlock makes perfect sense but the one of the things you know within grief counseling and within you know handling bereavement in general is one of the first things that you always need to find is something to help you continue pushing forward and if you don't have that that underlying you know vision of something that you are working for that makes your struggles worthwhile that puts meaning into all the pain and the suffering that you have gone through it becomes very very difficult you know you're talking about the civil war another war to look at and another point of view to look at is the um the point of view from eli wiesel from world wars and the concentration camps uh, this was a, this was a individual who, you know, Wiesel and, um, oh God, I just blinked on his name and I feel horrible for doing this. Um, man's man's search for meeting. God, why did I just blink on his name? Anyway, um, it's another concentration camp survivor, but they, their point here was that without meaning an individual can't survive. It, they won't survive because without meaning there is no reason to survive. And Victor so, Frankel, by the yes, way. thank you, thank you. Gosh, I feel terrible for getting that guy. I mean, amazing, I, amazing individual. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you have not read A Man's Search for Meeting or the Night Trilogy, I really strongly mm-hmm. recommend reading both of them. It's they're they're just amazing works. Um, but the underlying theme between both of them is, you know, without that drive to have to do something, you won't survive. You, you can't. And it, that goes for, you know, the most tremendous trauma that, that you can think of to just struggling every day without without having an end goal in mind. There's really nothing to to motivate you to go through life. And that's not to say that Ikora's motivation is not there. Obviously, it is there. But Ikora's motivation in this in this instance within, you know, Forsaken, the instance that we're talking about here with Kate's death is a transitory point of revenge like it's not something and and that is surely and that is definitely something that can motivate an individual to survive a a number of hardships Uh, a lot of soldiers will make that you know will attribute to that but what happens is after that revenge has been served what happens there there's no there's there's an emptiness there that that it doesn't fill and whereas where you see with zavala yes he is much more stoic um you know, he is much more uh, slow to express the grief, but it's not to say, and that's why I started the episode with that that different that distinction. That's not to say that he's not grieving. He just grieves in a different manner. He is doubling down on that dream of the city. He is doubling down on the tactics of, hey, look, he couldn't protect one of his best friends, but he can protect the city. And you know, if you think about it from that standpoint. He has just been harshly reminded that he could not protect one of the people that he most loved. So, yeah, it makes sense that he is doubling down to protect the the other people then in his existence that he has strong feelings for, and that is un, unquestionably that is the city. He is he is beholden to protecting the city, like that is his kind of his end 
his entire point of existence really at this point, it seems. Um, and, you know, in Beard, I think that's also along the lines of where our, our frustrations with his character's presentation in both Warmind and then your your frustration with the Dreaming City situation. I think that's where that frustration kind of comes from because it, it kind of flies in the face of that, whereas everything else really kind of aligns with that, that, um, that paradigm of his of we are guardians of the city. We, we seek to guard the city. We don't, we're not police. We're not conquerors. Our job is not to pacify, um, you know, X area. So, and I, I don't know if you guys have, if you guys think that's maybe something going on there, uh, or what your thoughts are in regards to the, the individual histories that we do see within there. Um, because, you know, in times of stress, people will fall back on what they what they know. Um, mm-hmm. And if you look at Ikora's background, again, iconoclastic, she kind of goes off on her own and does her own thing. Where does Zavala's background? Well, Zavala's background, again, we saw a, a Destiny, the Destiny 2, you know, trailer. It, it, like his entire thing was a journey to the city. His entire thing mm-hmm. was helping build the city. His entire thing was guarding the city. I mean, you know, like everything that he is is the city whereas everything that Ikori is arguably is you know again not not saying this is the right or wrong way but everything that she is is much more individualistic uh you know challenging things you know all that so it makes to me it makes sense that those two reacted the ways that they did and i know i'm rambling on this but you know like i said at the start, this is something that, you know, I kind of have a little bit of sensitivity and passion about as far as like, it was kind of your thing. It kind of, kind of, kind of one of my things. Uh, um, yeah. but I, I don't, I don't know. I'm going to let, I'm going to let, let green actually weigh in on this one. Cause I know she and I are on opposite sides of the view here. So I'm, I'm just that, curious. That's never happened. Yeah. Okay. That, that never it's rare. State, it's rare. Can, can you state your view in a very concise two sentence way and then i'll foil off of it i uh, like my view on why zavala is the way he is or the view on like Just, their reaction are you do you think it's more based off of his essentially his experiences and the fact that he is the city he's the city builder he's the the community leader more than anything the soldier I, I think that that is a large portion. I think that is a large part of his, what he defaults to. Mm-hmm. He defaults into a protective state. Um, I think that is without question one of his core personalities. He, okay. is, a pro- he is a protector. Uh, he is not an aggressor necessarily. Whereas Ikora is an aggressor, not necessarily a protector. It's it's just two sides of the same coin. Ikora is an action person. Right. Zavala is in some ways, but he's more reactionary because mm-hmm. he wants to he wants he doesn't want to be the aggressor in any of the situations. And Ikora is right. You're you're right. The um she is the opposite. She is the one that goes out and finds she roots out the trouble before it becomes a real problem with, we see that with the hidden. Uh Um, I think with Ikora in some ways, both, both of the remaining Vanguard's reactions are, they're too far on each end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I'm assuming they did that intentionally to show mm-hmm. off the fact that their balance is gone, that Cade is Cade was the one that balanced out the the scales between the two, even though he didn't even seem like that was going to be the case. Um, but with Z- with Ikora being as hurt as she is with this whole situation and losing her, basically her buddy, it's. I don't know. It's interesting to see what's going to happen from now on, because yeah. now that we've killed Aldrin or not killed Aldrin or both um, Petra and us fired right. at the same time, I don't care who who did what kind of thing. Mm-hmm. It's just the fact that it's happened. 
now that that has happened, Ikora doesn't have a focus per se. Mm -hmm. Like she did. And so it'll be interesting to see if she continues down this path or she calms down because we have that figured out or not quote unquote figured out, but taken care of, or will she be still the, the aggressor? Is she going to continually fight towards Riven? Is she going to fight towards Zavathun? Is she going to continually she gonna, hunger? Is she going to descend down into wrath? I don't, I don't think she will because but she's still. I mean, still, that's the danger. It is the right? danger of the situation, but I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't know. to I, be fair, I don't think she will either. I think she has enough control over herself to not have that. But I, I just kind of thought of something and I, I, I think it's, I know Green and Beard, you're both going to groan at this statement, but um, I think it's fitting that we also see the introduction of the Drifter here because if there's not ever, if there's never been a more apt situation to reference a double-sided coin, it has been Zavala and Ikora. Yep. They are the same coin, but they are two opposite sides. Oh, yeah. And I think that, you know, I, I just I do kind of find that interesting that, you know, we have entries talking about the price of a double sided coin and, you know, all this stuff, which I, I don't I don't think, to be fair, that was in reference to this situation. But I do find it kind of interesting that 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 exists. Right. Um and I think, you know, chat's kind of talking about that too as well. You know, it's it's more the reactive versus proactive. They they both really honestly do have the same goal. I really honestly do think that they have at their at their heart the same goal. It's just the path to achieve that goal that I think is the difference. And I mean I don't know. I mean, like I know a lot of people are saying that they don't see this working out now that Cade's gone. Um, I, I, I don't know, uh, because for better, you know, f well, for, for better, really, Zavala and Ikora are actually some of the older guardians in the game and yeah. they are, they definitely have their own preferences. They definitely, you know, obviously definitely have their own prior, like initial reactions to situations, but they also are really honestly really well balanced in and of themselves. Like they do recognize the need for cohesive teamwork. I mean, they, they wouldn't be Vanguard mentors if that wasn't the case. Right. So I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I see, I see what you're saying, green. I just, I'm kind of like the opposite of beard. I, I see both sides and I actually am on the side of Zavala. <laughs> Because yeah. it makes it makes more sense to me from a from a a tact tactical standpoint what he's doing for this particular situation. I'm gonna say not not everything. That's that's the whole part about tactics and military to begin with is to not be drawn into emotion. Yes. Yeah. And for myself as well, with taking taekwondo and a couple other uh, martial arts over the years. Uh, one of the largest things with any kind of fight is you generally don't want to become overly emotional to begin with. The so minute, Zavala you, the is minute right you lose in... your temper, you lose your edge. Mm -hmm. Right. But at the same time, you ha there's, there's people who argue that you have to have a, a passion, a certain amount of passion to be able to channel that. Well, right. there, is oh, a, okay, there is a level of being angry and being able to uh so let me let me actually quote this on a on an x-men first class level uh remember when xavier is talking with uh with magneto now i forget his name um eric and eric goodness goodness i don't know why i forgot that oh, it's okay uh, you, you save me for frankel i'll i'll save you for <laughs> it's not the <laughs> same oh god i, I just feel say, i feel is, so, oh, so much oh god worse. oh god that is <laughs> yeah okay we're not ever going to mention this again but yeah, continue. Say, let's uh, let's let's carry on like that never happened. Um, so he's talking with Eric, and he's attempting to bring out his powers the way that uh, the way that he can, and he effectively says the best part uh, of your of your powers of your uh, mind and so on is on the edge of uh, 
Passion and Serenity, I believe it is. Uh, and in that regard, he allows him to realize what moment uh, or moments were very good for him to uh, to think on and remember himself to allow for that passion to be there. Uh, but it still is something that he is in control of. Uh, but that's the biggest thing is just being in control of that passion that you that you have to temper yourself. Uh, and I know that some do allow for that to go a little bit too far. Uh, but that's the the long and short of it. I think that kind of sh- uh, sums that up uh, with what Green I think is kind of saying. Yeah. Uh, but it I think fits a little bit, a little bit in the same exact way that I'm that I'm kind of thinking of. Anyway, yeah. Well, and I and real quick, Green, if if you don't mind, I I no, would counter I would counter the point that, um, it's not that Zavala doesn't have passion. Yeah. It's that Zavala doesn't, he doesn't seem to funnel his passion in the same way that Ikora does. And yeah. right, for, right, me, but, but, for but, me personally, I am more similar to Ikora in the way that I react, even mm-hmm. though I try to be more Zavala. Like, <laughs> I, sorry, I try, sorry, I don't, I don't, that's not, that's not meaning to but be, you know sorry. what I mean? I try no, to I be totally, more I calm totally and collected do. and in a crisis. I can do that. I can I can be that calm person that needs to be the rock for the moment. But initially, I'm Ikora where I'm I'm yelling, I'm mad, I'm probably cursing. I have to walk away. Mm-hmm. And but, which is okay, but it. hang on, hang on. But right, you have to walk away. Right. But if so, I don't, I'm going to blow up on somebody and it's not a pretty sight. Right. But I mean, but think about that. That's ex- kind of exactly what he's doing. He's taking is, a step back. He wa- he's taking a step back to evaluate the situation. Is he walking away? But the, it's a different kind of stressor, though. Like, no, it, it is. It is. But I mean, and that kind of goes back to what Beard was saying as well. From a tactical standpoint, you you cannot let emotions in like you have to recognize that the emotions exist sure and as an individual i'm sure that he does he is quite emo- yeah dino just said this in in uh chat Z- and i'm gonna dino i'm gonna quote that because that's really good zavala is quite emotional but it's not the same fire as Zikora. zavala burns inward every life loss is his fault every loss every failure every time he ever thinks that he can relax something goes wrong to Zavala, right. the buck stops at him. It's all his fault. He is internalizing all this. And to compound that, what just happened? His One of his best friends just got gunned down. Right. And, and so, and what, but, but also look at the moment before that. What had just happened there? He had let his guard down. He had let his, his guard down with regards to the war mine situation. And it's just that reiteration of he cannot ever relax he is he is the he is responsible for the city's defenses ikora is responsible for like the research and you know the aggressive you know response to threats and identifying threats before they might become threats that is part of her job as part of the vanguard mentor but i think the other thing with ikora is the fact that she is it's all it's not the last straw but it is one of the final straws and the fact that she has been she has had to be very selfless and very externally thinking for all these different events, for all the different crises, the war, everything. She's had to think about others first before herself. And this with Cade dying, with Cade being killed the way he has been, it is kind of her last straw where she's just like, no, this one is for me. I don't care. I'm going to go after him or I need somebody. But at the same time, She's she just approves us going after him. She doesn't go after him himself, she, herself. She publicly approves us going after yes. him too. And which that I mean is right. A big That's thing. That's a big difference. That's a yeah. big, big thing. Like she didn't go after him herself. She realizes that her duty is to the city still, and she is going to help us the, as best she can with the situation. But she's she is going to be that person who is going to back us up in this situation. And to be fair on that situation, remember that Zavala also supported us. Mm-hmm. He just didn't do it publicly. He, Which, I mean, and, and there's, where... there's, that's, that's political. 
That's a political move. Right. Because again, this kind of goes into like the whole Osiris debate, you know, right. this whole thing of detracting from what is viewed as the paramount importance for the guardians as a general body to be doing. And if they, and, and Zavala, this is where I also kind of agree more with Zavala than Ikora. And I think we might fall on the, the opposite side here, but mm-hmm. Ikora sees, doesn't see a problem necessarily with that. But Zavala sees that as a slippery slope, because if he publicly supports a single guardian exacting revenge without the Vanguard's approval, you know, that what what's next? What's the next? What's what? Because it sets a precedent. Right. It now says is- that we are our own, you know, we are our own for and in. They're already struggling, you know, as we kind of mentioned before, we're already seeing a struggle because there isn't a consensus that, you know, dead orbits going out there and allying themselves with the reef and the emissary card, you know, I mean, spider, right. Mm. I mean, but right. But I mean, but that's what I mean is like the factions are already distributing or uh, dispersing into thing into things other than the city you don't have a speaker that is holding down the lin- the the central you know linchpin position whether or not you agree with their positions i think you can both agree that you know the speaker was paramount in keeping everyone focused on the city not on their own you know let's go chase after the legendary you know legendary vault of glass and and if you see within you see that within the uh the savin card from the awoken of the reef where uh Savin, who is the the guardian who was once an Awoken, gets brought to Mara, and she notes that he's like obsessed with a almost narcissistic level evolution of his own power. So the speaker curbed that, and you know, and that's kind of for better or worse, that's kind of fallen on Zavala because no one else is doing it. You know, it's, I mean. Yeah, and Hurt Chain is talking about that as well. You know, the city has already seen one Vanguard fail completely and fall. The second one is showing cracks, and Zavala kind of is like, he, he's kind of again going back to the whole the buck stops with him. You know, there's arguably from his point of view, he's the one that's holding everything together. Now, you can, and I will respond to my own point there, you can disagree with that because that is also completely almost borderline egotistical on Zavala's part because that's right. part, that's 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 and that and that is a fair criticism a completely fair criticism um but that also would go far go to explain you know some of the actions that he has taken as well um i just i understand their positions as i think the thing that makes me most angry about Zavala is the fact that he won't sanction what we did and i get it but it's zavala is the conservative in the situation and ikora is definitely not and it bugs the crap out of me (laughs) i am just i'm so tired of the um i'm tired of politics in real life just real let me just tie that into i'm tired of politics in real life so politics and game bug the crap out of me because i want to get away from it no, and that's so, and that's I mean that's a fair thing. And 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 I think that's also at the heart of the debate too is you know the politics can't be ignored here. Right. Because that is that is a driving force because Zavala is very aware of politics and I think Ikora is more right kind of along the lines of what you just said. She's like it doesn't matter. Like Mm-hmm. You know, and she, I think that was, if I, if, and this is going off memory, so I could be wrong, but I think that's along the lines of what she said in the trailer too, is like, mm-hmm. you know, this is, this is Cade. Like, this is not. Right. This some, is our this friend. This is not some random soldier. This is your, like, this is our, our best friend. He was a brother to us. And I think that's where. I kind of doubled down on the fact that it's not that Zavala is not grieving. It's that he is seeing, yes, it is. But what's more important is the survival of the city. And, you know, from his standpoint too, if one of their most powerful vanguards got taken out, that's a threat. That's a very dangerous threat. So we don't want to go running willy nilly into the face of that threat. So 
to move past this argument because we're going to continue it for days, <laughs> I think. Um, we talked about a little bit with the Ask FFC question of the week on who's the next Hunter Vanguard. Mm-hmm. Now, we were joking about it a little bit at the beginning, but do we honestly think Marcus Wren is technically the next Vanguard based off of the Ace of Spades quest dialogue? No. Uh-uh. Please explain to the folks at home. Okay, okay, okay. sorry, okay. sorry. No. Because, uh, no, no, I'm not trying to be cheeky. It's just I've had so many people tell me that that's who they think is going to be because of that I mean, one line. Okay, okay. I uh let me let me clarify. I'm not saying that Marcus Wren couldn't be the Vanguard, um, but it won't be because of the throwaway line that Cade made in the the quest, because <laughs> chat. Everyone's mad in chat. <laughs> chat is going off on this one. Um the 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 line from Cade in the in the the uh what was it, the Ace and I can't even remember Ace what the, the quest hole? Ace in the Hole. Uh, it's the one where you have to run around and you have to open all the chests, and it's like each one has a different line. Which Congratulations, is Congratulations, you killed which is, me. Yeah, which is, is by why... the way absolutely hilarious that Cade has all these things already written. Like he's I like love... the one for Tanix is absolutely hilarious. Oh no, the one for the Deepstone Crypt. Whoever made the Deepstone oh, Crypt. Oh my, is my gosh! Favorite. Yes, it cracks I, me up. I. I'll be seeing you soon. Like, it's like, uh-huh. oh my God. The long whisper line. Oh, it's bugging me so much. But, um, I and, know. Zavall- and the one for Ikora is just, oh God, you want to talk about a heart wrenching one? Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> Zavala's. But, um, no, so there's a line in there that says, you know, he's basically saying, oh, there's an, if another hunter killed me, you know, haha, jokes on you because you lost the dare. You get to inherit everything on me, including you're now the Vanguard mentor. Ha ha. You have to, you know, sucks to be you. Uh, And he and he makes a comment that he says of all of them, Marcus is the one I expect the most. So it's not him saying it's not him saying that it is Marcus. He's saying that he wouldn't be surprised that Marcus was the one that killed him. Like that's that's all he's saying. Right. I mean, that's that's the only thing that he's saying. He's not saying that Marcus is the next mentor. He's just saying. Do I? <laughs> like, do I need it. to bring up the lore entry for Stompy? <laughs> Stompy's do so I need to bring up the fact that so he funny. is he is he is on target? Like Marcus is on target as being the guardian that will kill. <laughs> Other guardians, other guardians, and it'll be something because he decided to do it for fun or testing. Like, yeah, I was about to say it's more <laughs> here, guys. Like, come on, and it's more of it's more of a mercy kill from the sound yeah. of it than anything else. Well, it, like even within Frosties, he tells. Uh, <laughs> I think it's. Uh, I think oh, it's whatever, it's, um, whatever the one now. I can't remember his name. He, he asks him he to shoot him, says, like. Yeah, like, hey, if I start to like start to fizzle or disintegrate or anything, can you just can you just shoot me, please, mm-hmm. for God's sake, just to just to get that out of the way? I'm like, all right, this is uh, <laughs> this just got weird. Like, well, he, that's what even the know. other hunter was. The other one's like, uh, what? Like, and he's what? like, well, mm-hmm. if you don't do it, I'm gonna go ask someone else. And they're like, all yeah. right, well, that's fine. I'll I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, wait, what kind of parts now? Oh my gosh! Anyway, yeah, yeah and Dino's I, Dino's saying is the line is literally maybe Marcus Wren. Like it's a question. Yeah. Like it, it's it's yeah. It wasn't confirmation of anything. It was Cade basically making one last gamble on who yeah, actually right. killed him. I'm gonna say oh, per man. that logic, some of the people that had said like Aldrin should have been the uh, the Hunter Vanguard, they were actually kind of right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I mean the the disqualifier there is you know obviously that obviously not a guardian. Uh, he's not a guardian, which which is why the Tanix the Tanix line or the Tanix quote is so great. He's like, uh, "Look, I'm not going to tell you anything. <laughs> I hate you, basically." Yeah, really. Oh, I didn't. Man. I didn't honestly listen to that one. Oh yet, god, but, uh, it's so funny. Like it's, it's I'm basically I'm currently snarky. grinding said quest out, like right now. 
So nice. That yeah. Count? Yeah. There you go. There you go. It's it's a good one. It was. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and the great, again, going back to the whole thing, the great thing is that he had one for everyone major in his life. <laughs> like, he has one He has one for Zavala. He has one for Ikora. I think he has one for Eris. Like, it, or yeah, he does have one because he finally, he's like, look, no, I'm really sorry about your ship. Like, <laughs> but, oh, and he also gives her permission to put rocks on the, his maps because he doesn't need them yeah. anymore. Yeah. Except we found out what that rock was anyway. Oh man. So yes, to to short short and sweet, no. If that is not to say that Marcus won't necessarily be the next mentor. God, right. I hope not, because that means experiments, yeah. but um <laughs> Right. <laughs> but it won't be because of that particular situation. Yeah, that line means from a from an outsider looking in that hasn't heard said line yet, uh, that line means diddly squat, guys. Sorry to tell you. Oh yeah, D- Dino Dino's giving me the quote for the Eris one. It's I'm sorry for your ship. However, if you did kill me, then I am not sorry for your ship, and I was totally justified. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> so. Um, I yeah, Green. Did you have uh? Was there a follow up to that particular question? Because no, we kind of just... we kind of jumped down your throat on the answer there. No, it's okay. I <laughs> that's that's really what I wanted to just get out there is the fact that we don't really necessarily know who the Vanguard mentor is going to be, yep. even though we do have some lines that tease at the possibility of who it's going to be. Yeah, it's not it's not actual verification of this is happening at all. Well, and yeah. And the other thing, I mean, and it's a legit debate if there is even going to be another Vanguard, right? I mean, it, it really is a legit debate there because it's with good reason for sure. Like, are they going to honor the, uh, the position considering how he died compared to how others have died previously or, are well, they, and you know, to be the position right, and to be fair, there we don't know how the others. We know how Cade got it. We yeah. don't know how Talula. Well, Talula was the first. Um, yeah. Oh God, but there was we one. There was know one. How Talula gave it up. Yeah, and then, but we don't. Do we? Do we know how Talula gave it up? Yeah, yeah, we do. It was a chomp chomp by an Ahamkara. <laughs> oh, that's right. Okay, and then so then the one that got it from her. Uh, we don't know. Do we know how Andal got it? Uh, there, that there was we do not. I think because there was there was a the there air. was an individual between Tallulah and um, Andal. Yeah, I'm not sure if Caliban ended up getting it or not. That's Caliban, the question that's right. I had yeah. earlier. If uh, um, he had actually received it, or if they just left that go, I don't. I don't know to be honest. Okay, so here's a funny funny backup question: Who would be the most ridiculous person? to be next hunter vanguard marcus yeah i'm gonna say marcus just fits the bill immediately he would uh he just it would just win and i think i think he would be the one that would probably fit with uh with cade's witticisms very well just from like the little bits we know of from the card so far uh versus somebody like shiro who is a little bit more intense uh, Shiro is, I would almost say, like a mix of uh, Cade and Zavala, if that could be a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's more like the knowledge of Cade, not necessarily the temperament of Cade. Uh, that would, I, that's what I think would be a little different with him. You know who I think would be the most ridiculous? Hunter mm. Vanguard. Benedict. No. Stop. No. <laughs> Full stop. Just like just, logically just, no. though, how would that even Oh work? I know. It wouldn't. It wouldn't. It would I, just I'm be like I, I, just, I love how Beard's like just, just stop talking. But I'm sitting it's here, just I'm me like throwing an audible. But this why? is what it's this me is throwing YouTube an audible. Comments. That's just what knock it, it off. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't YouTube comments. <laughs> 
Uh, it's just me being cheeky. Somebody oh, said it in Dino, chat. I Dino thought it, got it. I had Dino, to. Dino is right. Yeah, Andal got roped into it because uh, the the one Ka- Kauko Kaiko is who I think came after Tulula, and he went. They went missing for two years. <laughs> they just like disappeared, yeah. and they're like, ah. Um, and then the uh yeah dino saying the entry that talks about is winner takes all it was where they made the 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 initial vanguard dare was whoever killed tanix first or whoever yeah. no because tanix didn't i'm so confused i need to go back and read these because i'm i'm trying to remember off the top of my head but i think basically it was a competition about tanix basically and mm-hmm, Andal, yeah. Andal lost, and that's how Andal became the vanguard. And then, basically, in honor of that, when Andal was killed by Tanix, that's how Cade got put in the position. Yep. Right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Dino Tanix died basically a couple dozen times. <laughs> that's fair. I, it's not. It's not wrong. It's not wrong. Kind of. That's kind of fair. Um, I was gonna say we actually had a dispatch this week. Um, give me one second, and I will pull it up because it's a fun one. So, real quick, where did my? Here we go. All right. Dispatches received from the wilds. All right. So this one comes from uh. uh J A H zero five six zero zero four. I'm not even going to pronounce. I'm not even going to try to pronounce that name. I'm just going to spell it out. And he says, "Dear FFC, hi. My Halloween costume slash cosplay is going to be my Sentinel Titan for D two. For my dog, I want him. I want to have him be one of the Barons from Forsaken. Which would you recommend? Thanks so much for the podcast and your good work to this community. And he sent us a picture of his dog, who's absolutely adorable." But nice. So, so which which one of the barons of the Forsaken should should he dress his dog up as? Hmm. What? Okay. What kind of dog does he have again? Uh, it looks like a. I'm, I'm gonna just guess. So don't don't take offense. It looks like a mutt. Uh, it looks okay. like a smaller like, a smaller mutt, like a smaller. Okay. So not the machinist. No, not big enough to be the machinist. Um. The trickster would be kind of cool. That's what I yeah, I'm kind of thinking trickster or yeah, but trickster would be a little easy. Why not Mad Bomber? Well, because Mad Bomber has the the robotic legs, right? I mean, that'd be kind of fun. I guess that's true though. And it you would explain really be it, able would, to do it would it would fanatic without the staff. Right. And Mad Bomber would explain why the dog wants to do its own thing. Yep. Yeah. Chat, yep. Chat's chat's not helping. They're still arguing about the Vanguard situation. <laughs> well, like, okay. no, it's it fine. Them. It's a good debate to have. It's a good debate to have. Yeah, I think I would I would dress him up as either the trickster, which would be a pretty easy costume, or yeah, yeah. I can see the Mad Bomber too. The Mad Bomber. I, I think like the three that came to mind immediately were, and I Trigger just said it in chat is Rifleman, Rifleman. Trickster. Or Mad Bomber. And that's just because, you know, again, Machinist is definitely out unless you're going to put like a 50 pound bubble on the dog. No, just just styrofoam. The problem is, is she'll knock it off or he'll knock it off. Yeah. Or chew it up. I want to see this picture, though. I, I want to see. I sent it to you. No, I want to see the updated photo. With oh, the dog like in the costume. of the dog. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, definitely. I want to see the dog in the costume. So the writer, oh my gosh, the writer put put the just, <laughs> they you could do that. I've seen you could like totally you see do the that. banana ones. Yeah, there's definitely ways he could do that. That would be fun. But so yes, I I think the vote really is kind of. It sounds like the Mad Bomber. <laughs> I think it would be a slight challenge, but it would also be kind of fun. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so with that being said, do we want to jump to any final thoughts or shout outs and be here for another 45 minutes? 
<laughs> I, yeah, I'm okay, so it's kind of us. Here's my thought and shout out. I'm going to go first and steal, steal a little thunder. We are trying very hard to be tactful about and conscientious, conscientious about the time, the amount of time we're spending talking about things. It is difficult. Blue had to install a bot on Discord to help <laughs> keep us on time. To be fair, it doesn't take much to make me install a bot on Discord, but no. let's, let's all be, I'll be completely friends. transparent there. Like, I'll be completely right. transparent and admit my ex- admittance is the first step. Right. But uh, I want to thank, and I don't remember the gentleman's name who sent it in. He sent in a a little critique of saying that we had gotten a little too long and we reflected on the, the email that he sent in. He was an older gamer. I think he said it was like another 51 year old gamer mm-hmm. who said that he couldn't, he wasn't able to digest this podcast in a certain amount of time because we went on for two and a half hours last week, which the topic was very broad. And so that's one of the things we're going to try to focus on is try to focus into a more narrow topic as well as kind of keep on top of the time as we're talking, which it's going to be a a nice um, balancing act between us having our normal banter and getting the information out to you that we need to. So I really appreciate, and I'm really, I'm really kicking myself for not having that email pulled up that blue sent um, that about from this guy. I want to thank you for sending in this criticism because it's going to help us grow as a podcast and help keep us on top of our toes and try to make a better show for you guys. That being said, if you could do us a favor and go to iTunes and leave us a review, I know blue talks about it at the beginning of every show. If you could do that and I'm, and I'm telling you pull out your phone right now. And if you don't have iTunes, that's fine. Go talk about us somewhere else. Go tell your friends. Go tell your coworkers. Anything you can do to kind of spread the word about Focus Fire Chat, whether it's through iTunes, which helps us be bumped in the polls, or talking to your friends about it, will help spread the community and spread the knowledge a little bit faster and better. So that's my goal for you guys. Go out there and do it right now. Don't wait. You'll forget. Don't go to the bathroom. You'll forget. Get off the toilet right now. Go and... <laughs> Do maybe, that right maybe now. Maybe not right now. Maybe I mean take care of things first. I mean and then get up like I mean we gotta, there's no there's there's some levels here, Green. We gotta we gotta talk. I just okay. I don't know about you sometimes. I mean I'm not trying to be invasive. Uh, I just really <laughs> want Well and the other up. and the other thing too to kinda uh to kinda balance out the what Green is saying here is um let us know. Let let us right. know what yeah. you if you if you dis you know if you disagree with the the request from and it's from uh, uh, F X S T I. I don't know if that's a way to pronounce that. He he says he's AKA the fifty one year old gamer. Um, if you if you have a different opinion of that, please let us know because I mean to be to be blunt, um, we can only we can only gauge what we need to change based off what we hear. Right. Um, and, feedback and so, is always welcome. and so feedback is, you know, when, if, if that's through iTunes, we have a contact form on the website, you know, we're in the discord. We definitely communicate, you know, obviously we communicate very frequently with every, for every podcast team we communicate throughout the week. So if you message one of us, we're going to, we are going to hear it. But that being said, you know, again, if you, we, we have to have those messages to to evaluate what we need to change. And we are more than willing and more than happy to change stuff that makes sense, that makes everything, you know, a better thing. Um, that, that's our goal. That's, show... a, that's our goal is we want it to be enjoyable for everyone as Good well as everyone. educational. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's definitely the goal here. So don't and... don't feel like anything is too critical because it's not. Right. And it's definitely something like we're going to have fun doing this. And if the, some, I mean, we're going to try to have fun and give you the best show that we can. That's what our goal is and what you guys can take and enjoy and do and use and spread the knowledge and spread the love. I, I think one of my favorite things is the fact that when I jump into fire teams, people 
immediately start asking me questions about lore. And I'm like, guys, I'm, I just want to shoot things, but come in. Yeah. 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 Come and yeah. chat, come and chat and discord. Not so much while I'm trying to shoot things. Cause I'm got a really bad KD currently. Cause I'm trying to shoot things and talk about lore and I'm more focused on the lore at the moment. So, right. And I think the other thing too, is like, if you do enjoy the rambling, that we are we're talking about here if you do enjoy that, that we're doing right now um right uh definitely come and join the live stream or watch the archives of yes the live stream because there's a lot of rambling that goes on after or before the show that doesn't get into the the actual audio feed and that's right. also on twitch um again kind of pushing there as well as um Oh God, I just blanked on it, uh, which if you're not subscribed to us on Twitch, you know, that's another way you can kind of get to the if you if you guys enjoy the rambling, because I see chats, you know, kind of obviously the people who show up for the live stream kind of have the expectation that the li- the the uh, live stream is a lot more chaotic than the the end result, which makes sense. Uh, it is. But and so, you know, you, you come into it with that expectation. But if that if that's something you enjoy, definitely, definitely come join the live stream um, because we do it every Friday. And I know that some people, you know, you might not be able to make it. That's fine. Time-wise. Twitch, uh, Twitch makes it where it archives for I think it's like five or six days. If you want to kind of hear the ramblings that go on behind the scenes a little bit, it's always over there as well. Um, but yeah, I, I think that's that, that was a that's a actually a really good. Good shout out there, Green. Uh, Beard, do you have anything? I know you have. Uh, I know you have some videos coming out. Well, it's honestly just to kind of mimic what you guys are saying as well, because I'm I'm in a position where I have uh, I have kind of stifled my voice, and I hate that I've had to stifle my voice because creatively I've felt like I've needed to not say some things. Uh, and that's actually kind of hurt my channel and has overall hurt like what it is that I've done. Uh, this is why I am trying to do things differently uh, to attempt to just say, hey, this is me trying to reach out. But if I don't have the feedback that you guys uh, supply, I'm not going to know if it's going to work. Right. Uh, and if I'm not told that stuff, either good or negative is what we uh, either positive or negative or 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 critiquing, however you really want to say it. I just say positive or negative because it's either uh, it, it's in a lot of ways just one or the other. I just don't know how things are going to work. And that's why I ask questions a lot of the times of like, what do you guys think of this content? If I don't know, I'm not going to be able to grow. Uh, but in the same, I'm to the point as a creator where I am done trying to appease everybody. Yes. And there is going to be a point where I'm still going to have to look at some comments and be like, I've got 30 other comments that are telling me they enjoy it. And I got one guy that's telling me he doesn't. I have to go ahead and start thinking about that as well. Mm-hmm. So I may be able to tie back on something, but I need to also think about the large criticism as a whole. So that's why feedback is so important, because creatively we do still grow from that feedback, period. Right. There is no other way that I can really put that. Uh, so I understand exactly where these guys are coming from, uh, and why it has as, uh, is as important as it is. Uh, cause when I come on this show, I kind of, as much as I have been here for a while now, I still kind of feel like I am <clears throat> somebody that is here that, uh, that is trying to back up what these guys are talking about. Uh, just as much as the information I can kind of like input for for everybody else but i'm still kind of like my own entity quote unquote that's trying to to fill in the gaps but cohesively i think we've i think we've grown which is mm-hmm. uh, oh yeah definitely. just saying a lot con- mm-hmm. considering that we uh we we started off a little flaky and i was just like i don't know what's going on guys i've i've I don't know about interacting with people. This is hard. <laughs> well, yeah. and you know, you mentioned that at the beginning too about the Destiny community, and that's that's one of its strengths is we are all very innately collaborative. Yep. Like a lot of the creators, you don't see that in a lot of other communities, and I, you know, I mean, I think that's I, I think that's kind of going to be you know part part of my shout out too here is, you know, in so much as the feedback that we get, it's it is extremely helpful. And as a general rule, it's always been constructive. 
Like yep. it's not it's not normal to get um, like flaming comments at all. No, you know it, it's. It, I mean, like I'm not I'm not saying that it doesn't happen because that would be a a bold faced lie. <laughs> but um, but it's like you know the 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 large majority of comments that I see, not just with our channel and not just with Beard's channel, but like with everything is is usually a matter of like hey you know why don't you think about doing it this way and it's always and even other contents you know other content creators um there's not a lot of like attempted sabotage or anything like that like nefarious mm -hmm. that you see sometimes other places so i really yeah. i mean i geez i re i appreciate everyone in the community for you know the patience uh you know we're all we're all trying to figure out how to do the best thing here, you know, and I think everyone realizes that. And for the most part, everyone's happy to chip in, you know, their voice. And, yeah. and, you know, from our standpoint, we, I'll, I'll be honest, we appreciate the hell out of it. Um, mm -hmm. you know, it, it helps, it helps. And that's really, it can't be said more than I, I mean, I can't say that enough. So, yeah. um, yeah, with from both sides of it all. I oh say yeah, that, definitely. You know, it helps from all like, cause anything that I might get over here for feedback to, I take over to my channel and vice versa. Like if I hear something from my channel, I attempt to, to also bring it back over here if need be to just say, Hey, this was said, do, what do you guys think of that? Uh, right. seldom does that happen now and again, but it like, Blue said it's kind of a collaborative effort and it definitely shows with the way that everything's put together so yeah it's I, I i know i'm kind of dragging this out a little bit longer no, but it's it's just a matter that that is so important for us uh to grow it creatively artistically and kind of as 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 people in general because i say all the time on my channel if i go like four or five days without content i start to actually feel like legitimately sick like physically sick because I haven't made any content whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, and just being able to reach out and talk to people and understand that like my voice matters to a point uh, does a lot for me. But being able to cater that voice to you guys as well is just as important to me as a creator. So thank you for all the feedback you guys do leave when you get a chance to. It does make a difference. All right, so with all that being said, We'll run through an outro, and then, hey, guess what? We're going to stay for a little bit of an after show. Hey, that never happens. With that, we'll begin to wrap the chat up. Thank you again to those over on Twitch for coming to spend your evening with us. If you'd like to join us for the live streaming of the episodes, please be sure to give us a follow over on twitch.tv slash focusfirechat. Links to our episode archives can be found at www.focusfirechat.com. Please be sure to email us at focusfirechat at gmail.com with any comments or questions for our team concerning the podcast and let us know how we're doing by giving us some feedback and a rating over on iTunes as well. Also, be sure to check out all of our amazing partner podcasts within the Guardian Radio Network over on theguardiansofdestiny.com. So until next time, focus your fire and may your light shine bright. It's what? so hard not to say something playing Crucible <laughs> when you just want to scream. That's why I'm not playing Iron Banner right now. I will be shortly, though, now that we're done. Why am I burning? Stop burning. <laughs> why am I burning? Oh, <laughs> it's, I don't understand. It's, it's the bad touch. <laughs> yeah, really. Fire bad! Fire bad! Pull up. Oh my god, ever since I learned this trick with the bow, I'm just like... Loving this. Which trick? <laughs> the, the punch and sh the shooting punch. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, that makes a big it's, difference. It's so much fun. <laughs> this Titan is so confused why I keep winning our punching matches. <laughs> he keeps running after. <laughs> he keeps running after me, and I'm like, arrow punch. <laughs> I like how you have like this. Cadence, arrow punch, arrow like, punch. It's right, the Falcon. Captain it's Falcon. I was about to say down. it's the Falcon punch. Falcon punch. 
All right, so now that I'm getting down some of the tactics that are behind the fission class for warlocks, I'm really starting to like it. Because I had a thing with Kamehameha where just, like, the amount of super energy that I could get was ridiculous. Yeah. But now that I have my uh, health gains back from my melee, uh, and the the way that I can charge up my super, it's ridiculous. This this is such a good subclass. I see why people are running it a little bit more often now. Yeah, it's super popular. Yeah. And... I'm just glad to see that Void is, like, coming back with a vengeance because void had a lot of problems and void being in the position it's in is just amazing it's just a ton of fun that basically sums up my forsaken experience it's a ton of fun oh actually did i Get that unlocked? Oh, he did. He I'm for some reason point. leading this team, and it's really weird. <laughs> that's been. I'm playing with Lux mean. and like some really good players, and yeah. I'm at the top of the leaderboard, and I feel kind of dirty. I don't know what I did. You did the arrow punch. No, I don't. I'm using a hand cannon. That also works. Oh, okay. That's... I did not have top skills. Thank God. That would that's... have really made me feel weird. That's my uh, next thing that I need to do, and I'm about tempted to dig out my uh, my uh, West of Sunfall 7, because that, that hand cannon still is a beast to me. I'm using Trust, and it's so good. How do you get Trust? Because I want Trust. Gambit. <laughs> so beard. How do I... he, yeah. You, you, you read into that as much yeah, as you want. Yeah, I know, I know. I... I thought about saying something, but... <laughs> nope, you read into that all you want to, because it's absolutely still true. <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I want trust. How do I get that? Well, yeah. <laughs> let's start. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, okay, Hurt, sorry. I think I'm drop or dropping in right now. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna pop into the party chat, so I'm gonna head off so I can head to bed because okay. tomorrow's gonna be a long day because it's raid day for us. Yes, I'm so, gonna say I've got a long day coming up myself because of day after iPhone launch. Day yay! after I will never talk about this phone ever. For <laughs> all this right, phone, all for right, this all time right. Ever. Let's see what we get. Uh, all right. Nido chat. I will see you guys later. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I agree. Night, you too. All right. Night. Chat, we're going to take off. You guys have a great night as always, and we will see you. <laughs> see, we'll see you guys next week. <laughs>